All right, right, right. We are live back in the saddle. Let me get a uh, do a little pre preparation here for uh, malt. I got to get a little email sent here. Thanks for coming by. We just talked about the Dal Ewan, Dal Ewan, 16 year uh, foreign fauna bottle, and uh, did pretty well. I think it's one of the, I'd say more, more of a gem um, than most other bottlings that I've had. And um, with that said, I think it's definitely worth a pickup if you can get it overseas, if you're lucky enough to, um, you know, if you're lucky enough to uh, be able to order. I'm not sure what state you guys are in, but uh, hopefully you can do a little ordering on the side. And even if you're not in, in a certain state, maybe you have a place or you work in a, a state that can accept it, that kind of thing. Um, if you can, then I think uh, it's definitely well worth the uh, the extra look there. Hey, Trooper, uh, thanks so much for coming back over. And uh, Juan, good to see you. In Lost Cause, as always, Lost Cause, you're always first, man, <laughs> it seems like. Actually, Trooper beat you today. He was an early bird. He, he was on the uh, short review even before I started it. <laughs> Hey, thank God it's Tuesday. There's Santa. Been needing to make another order. Yeah, I hear you there. I would I would seriously consider putting this sucker on there. Um it's uh it's funny when I ordered the belt the Blair Athel 12 year old, it came with a nice little box, a blue box, and you know has the same kind of logo on it. Uh for some reason that's the only foreign fauna bottle that seems like that they uh I think it's because with some of these, they did wooden boxes, believe it or not. And of course, they're not going to, for 60 bucks, they're not going to send a wooden box every time. Sorry, I'm the focus got all sorts of whacked out, probably because I showed you guys the bottle. Hopefully, this will uh, fine tune the focus for me. Anyway, yes, that is the uh, Ardbeg 19 in the background, buddy. Neo, Xerxes, good to see you. Uh, I have not opened it yet. I'm saving it for a uh, um, special occasion. I'm thinking maybe once we get out of the uh, COVID uh, nonsense, maybe that'll be better. Why is this not focusing better? Sorry, guys. Let me see if I can get this uh, if I can get this to uh, focus better in the background. I think you should get two blacks instead. <laughs> Yeah, I, I went through my black uh, committee release way too fast. Good to see you there, Daniel. Um, I do need to get a new, um, the new, what you call it, um, the black uh, limited release, uh, my friend Everwind, uh, who sometimes I see, sometimes I don't, I'm not sure, sometimes I think Tuesdays are rough for some people, uh, I used to see him uh, pretty much uh, you, every Thursday, uh, Scotch for Dummies uh, do their show on Thursdays, I used to go after them, uh, when they got bigger and bigger, they started doing some like after party stuff, so I thought, ah, you know what, I'll just move, there we go. Sorry about that. I'm not sure why it took forever for it to focus, but um, anyway, they uh, they were doing uh, some after stuff with Discord, so I thought, you know, I'll just I'll just do a different night, and thankfully uh, Tuesday seemed like a decent one for a lot of people. Uh, Andrew Page, good to see you, man. Looking forward to learning about the Dolluan. Uh, I almost have to catch myself. I'm so used to seeing Dolluan that I have to say Dolluan because uh, it's it's uh, it's there's nothing worse than hearing somebody say it incorrectly if you know how to say it the right way. It's weird. I'm not sure why. I picked up all I could carry. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I, I I don't blame you, man. That's a really great whiskey. Ben Demon Hunter, Slancha, uh, va to you, man. Howdy, definitely. What are you guys sipping tonight? Lost Cause, Trooper. I think Trooper said he's messing with some sort of um, Aaron Sherry cask. I forgot what it was, a bodega something or other. I don't know what you were going off about something. It was it was intriguing, but I, I couldn't really focus because I had to do the review. <laughs> but well, I'll definitely let you uh, give more details about what you're going on there. Yeah, you have some anti-aliasing going on or something, yeah. That was weird, um, but thankfully it seems like it all it got all fixed. What, what are you guys sipping? When I get malt in here, we'll go over some of these notes again uh, that we did on the review for you guys. But uh, 
Yeah, I know. Like the the cat, my, I call them the cast strength guys. They're not gonna fall in love with this whiskey because it's only forty three percent. And I know the coloring and chill filtering really are, are a pain in the ass to deal with. But with with all that said, is it a good dram? Is it a great dram? It actually is. Uh, leans toward uh, being great, fantastic, awesome. No, but it's it's a great solid four out of five. I'd say. Um, just finished supper. Probably too early for drinking then. <laughs> oh, but I'll have in 12. Gotcha. Uh, Long Row 14 Sherry, Our Big Black, and the Bone More 10 Doris Moore. That sounds like a smorgasbord. <laughs> that sounds outstanding. I have some Balvenie Doublewood 12. Nothing special. Hey, Balvenie and Doublewood is not a, I mean, I, I know it's, it's not one of my favorite Balvenies, but it's not cheap either. It seems like I remember when I got out of the bar, they want to charge you an arm and a leg for it. Hey, Dram, good to see you, man. How's California? Hopefully you're off. And what are you sipping? I know you've had to port something by now because I saw you on Malt's, Malt's channel. <laughs> the Aaron Sherry Cast Bodega Cast Strength 55.8 NAS. Interesting. Non colored, non chill filtered, really solid Dram. Okay. That does sound good. Hmm. Almost too good. No, it does sound good. I'm surprised they don't have an age statement on it, but it's probably because they uh, wanted to experiment. Typically, when you see these NESs from good distilleries, they are typically, um, you know, wanting to, to try something a little different, not go too far into the weeds where they're spending lots of money and marketing and and all this stuff they just want to see how it goes first and then if it goes well then they'll you know either make it a standard age or do something uh, a little more stable looks like uh Madeira yeah I like Madeira casks man oh the small batch number two bourbon small batch I've had the um a small batch bourbon from Country Vintner from Kilhoman. That was really good. That's one of the best bourbon, just straightforward bourbon cask whiskeys I've had that I can think of. Uh, and it's rare for me to get excited about a straight up bourbon cask whiskey, I have to say. So we're still working done now, though. Haven't poured anything yet, Dram. Oh, man. What do you think? What are you feeling? You feeling uh, like you need something sweet, like something savory, something peated, something non, something heavy sherry, something light? Let me know what you are uh, kind of feeling. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll want to join in on a sherry uh, dram. Do you have any Daluin uh, dram? Just curious. Daluin. Don't mess with it. <laughs> really want to try the uh, Edredauer 9 cast strength single cast. It looks like coffee is so dark in the picture. Wow. And Edredauer is pretty good about craft. I don't think they color. And I don't think they chill filter. But don't quote me on that. Um, but Edredauer is usually pretty good about not, uh, you know, screwing around with the uh, the craft of the uh, whiskey. Thankfully, they're pretty good about it. So if it looks dark in the picture, it's probably dark for real. Something not peated. I've had lots of peat last couple of days. Yeah, then I would go for a sherry. Um, have you had any Daluin, uh Dram? Just curious. I don't have a Daluin actually. I don't think I've cracked it yet. Oh, I do have one. Well, hell, crack the uh, crack the old uh, the old. Uh, do you have the four? Uh, <laughs> I was gonna sneak you in without you expecting it again. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. Happy Tuesday. Yes, definitely happy Tuesday. It couldn't come quick enough. <laughs> How about for you? Yeah, man. Things are going well. Things are going well. Another good week. Hope uh, you and yours are doing well. And uh, looks like we got a nice, healthy chat. And I hear you're doing uh, another of the Flora Fauna releases this week. Yeah, I got sucked into the. Uh, it's almost like once you go down the Flora and Fauna road, you find a couple of gems and you're kind of like, well, which other ones are, you know, decent enough to buy? Because yeah. thankfully they're pretty cheap in price. Like I showed you the one of them I got for like 40 bucks, one of them I got for 60. Um, 
they're usually around that range. Mm -hmm. So the good ones are worth it. The bad ones we'll talk about later. And that's the ones that even at 40 or 50 bucks, I would probably do a hard pass on. But thankfully, this is not one of the ones I would pass on. This is the one I think is probably one of the best of the whole series, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. And it's funny. You know how, you know, it's, I, I kept saying, Daluing was how I was pronouncing it, and I figured out today that I was completely wrong. <laughs> oh, really? What, how how is it pronounced? Well, okay. Well, the, the funny thing is, I knew it was the first part was dull because the Uga doll people, you know, you hear some people say Uga Dale, which kind of throws me off. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it is spelled D A I L at the end, but in in Scottish, you always just say doll. So the same thing happens with Daluing. It's just doll, but the I always put like an AI, the, the IAN always made me think that it had like an, like a AIN kind of sound to it, but it's just Daluin. Just Daluin. It's Dal really, Okay. It's, I was saying it like, yeah, Daluin or Daluin, Daluin. <laughs> yeah, this is. They're, that's the funny thing about Scottish Gaelic is it seems like they're real, just, they just keep everything kind of flat, like just a Daluin, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's weird, it's but. Fun, um, so this is, um, this is another one out of that flora and fauna range. I was, I was mentioning this on the happy hour that, uh, you had got a couple of these now. Is that the, and that's a, that's a distillery bottling. Okay. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the rundown on that? Yeah. And, and, and I, I was doing a little research earlier today. I was wondering when did they, you know, when did they start this? And, and they actually, uh, when I say they, I mean Diageo, the company that, that owns like 27 distilleries. It's crazy. Um, they did this in 1991 they started, which was a long, you know, and it doesn't sound like a long time ago when like when you're thinking mm -hmm. about 30 or 40 year old scotch, but, but as far as a series running that long, that's a long time to be running a, an actual series, right? Mm -hmm. And they're all official bottlings. That's what's kind of nice about the Florent Fauna series, even though the coloring and chill filtering kind of always kind of burns my ass. I, I wish they didn't do that, but with that right. exception, that's my only bitching part. And the Well, they do keep it down to like, this one's 43%. It's a little, a little lower on the ABV from what I really like. You know, forty-eight would have been a lot better, but uh, that one was forty-six. You said this is forty-three percent, actually. Oh, 43. Okay. And do you know well, what's do you? I mean, did you learn much about that distillery? I mean, this is again like you know uh, one of those distilleries I had frankly not really heard much about. The only thing they that, island, or I'm assuming. Oh, I was yeah. They're space side actually, um, and it it does taste like a like a space side, like a, a sherry bomb kind of a space side. Uh, when I say sherry bomb, I don't mean like high ABV. Just just a lot of sherry influence on the cask, though. Yeah, and, and it's um for for even at forty three percent, I do love the sixteen years that it, you know they presented at, and even with the coloring and chill filtering and whatnot, just going by nose, palate, and finish with and without the water, it's pretty damn complex for what it is. That's good to hear. And what it, what um. You said it's like, do you know what other stuff they have in their range? And you said it was 43%? This one's 43. It's a Dalyween 16 year. This is the only official bottle that exists, though. You can't get in another one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Similar to that ball blur you did, or blur ethyl you did last week, rather. Exactly the same. And they have a lot of the stories like that in this series. Uh, the Tinnanik, they have a, a 10 in the Flora and Fauna, but they do have like a 17 and a even like a 32-year-old. I mean, they're crazy expensive and not worth it. But you, you can get outside of that distillery. But there's but a lot of them, like the uh, Machnamore, you, you probably might, might have heard of those guys. Um, oh, yeah. the They're from Aaron, right? The Machnamore? Well, the Mountain Moor is its own distillery. Oh, it's just oh. a one-off, yeah. It might be in the area, in the Aaron area, but it's 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 definitely like its own. They're usually used for a lot of uh, blends and uh, uh, independent bottlings. You never, they only have the one Florent Fauna official bottle. I yeah. think it, I can't remember the year if it's twelve or fifteen, but I think it's a twelve-year-old bottle, like the Blair Athol, for example. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's some of them are, are worth seeking out, like this one, and some of them are not. <laughs> And that's why I thought, well, it'd be nice to do some short reviews on the ones that at least I think that are better, uh, you know, that, that you should pick up, especially mm -hmm. for the price. So I'll give you a few notes on this one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. 
lots of, of really good spicy cinnamon off the nose was the first note. Some slight sm smoky raspberries are there too. A little bit of leather. Not not as much as like a spring bank leather, but just a slight leather note. Grassy grassiness. A um, little sulfur. Not not too much though. Not you know not like a Bowmore 15 Darkest or a, a real meaty Mortlock, but something <laughs> like, you know, just subtle. But there's a lot of roses in here too. A lot of nice uh, nice balance on the nose all around. Mm. And the uh, palette, it goes to like chocolate, both dark and milk. A lot of espresso, like mm. mocha notes. It's got a lot of, and, and a boatload of like regular nuts, like walnuts and hazelnuts and cashews. What about these nuts? <laughs> Those are the best. No. Yeah. That's all I got, y'all. That's all I got. <laughs> Great. We got is, that a, is that thing all, bur is it bourbon or sherry or a mix of both or? No, it's all sherry, pretty much. Uh, it, it's it's a sherry maturation, I should say. It's like I suspect that they did twelve years in a bourbon esque or a, a European oak cast, and then you know the four years left in um in a, sh a sherry. I don't think it's first fill. I think it's refill sherry, but it's enough to definitely make it. I mean, you've definitely smell and taste it. It's all over the place. Lots of um, even dates and figs. In the, the palette, green, uh, I'm sorry, uh, red grapes and medium, like a medium mouth coat. Wow. This sounds interesting. I mean, it almost sounds like, I mean, it definitely sounds like a sherry, a sherry maturation. But the other thing interesting is like, it almost sounds like it's got a little bit of a tart sharpness, like almost like a wine finish or something. <laughs> it does, but it's, there's no red wine in there um, that I, I, they don't, definitely don't say anything about it. If there is, yeah. they're, they're pretty uh, tight lipped about most things, but the, uh, it definitely has a lot of sherry tones to it and a lot of dry. I suspect it's Oloroso sherry. I don't, get a lot of sweetness i do get some sweetness which is nice for the balance but it's definitely more of a savory herbal dram than anything else mm -hmm. the finish is a bit short to me some people think it's long I, I thought it was a little short but i do like it's very earthy gravy like a lot of malted barley a, a bit of smoke and some cedar wood it, but it's really drying and i think it's because of that oloroso you know Sounds, sounds really solid. What did, what did you end up uh, scoring that, if you don't mind sharing? It, it, it just, uh, I'll, tell, give me, I'll tell you, after like a, a drop of two or two of water, even yeah, at 43, yeah. even at 43%, I would definitely always advise trying it with, you know, a drop or two. Yeah, I agree. And it, it's funny, it changes it a lot. It brings chocolate actually from the palate to the nose when you add a drop of, of water to it. And it gets really mossy like a mossy grasp with a lot of herbs on on the nose but there's like bananas in there too <laughs> it's crazy Man. yeah this sounds like a delicious dram it, it 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 is it's just the only thing you have to be wary of is it's at 43 percent if you're used to drinking cast strength whiskey it's not going to it might not give you that oomph factor that you're yeah. looking for you know well i mean i think there's a i I would never want to find myself in a position where I could only enjoy cast strength, you know. Uh, I, I tend to want to because, again, I mean, but it's not because I want to drink it neat at cast strength. It's because you can kind of add your own water to it, you know, yeah. and give yourself kind of the flavor profile that you want out of it, which I think is the real the, the real win in cast strength. That's it. I mean, uh, 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 you know, there are some 18-year-old whiskeys that are in that 43% range. Um, that I quite frankly enjoy. I think of Glen Morangy 18, the Glen, well, the old Glen Livid 18, uh, even to some extent, the the well, it's the Highland Park 18 43 or 46. I don't quite remember, it drinks like a 43, but it might be 46. <laughs> I think it's 46, but uh, did you ever get a chance to try the old 18 and not just the Viking Honor one, the new one? No, I only had the Viking, uh. Yeah, Viking or not Viking or Viking uh, Pride. Pride. Yeah, uh, hopefully you get a chance to try that the last one. I want to see if you think it's as weak as that new one because I bet you 
I'm thinking, I don't want to bet bet, but I'm, I'm half betting that you'll probably be like, this one's got a little more oomph to it than this other one, but I, I wanna, I'll, I'll wait. Hopefully we can get you one and find a... Yeah, I think they're probably still out there in the world. Usually they're like 130. I mean, I, I mean it's still yeah. a lot, but I for mean, 18 years... The Highland Park 18 is one of the whiskeys, at least in that 18-year-old range, that seems to have maintained some level of price consistency, even with you know how things have changed over the last year you know i think of, there are some other 15s and 18 year olds that have went way higher in price i mean god look at glendronic 18 hour days. oh yeah it's crazy prices well partially <laughs> because of oil for 180 it's like what partially probably because a lot of their stuff has got that extra bonus age if you know what i mean on some yeah. other I, well, bet that's me, I have two of those that are the quote 24 year old Allardyce. Nice, man. Uh, You're lucky. <laughs> I'll definitely, yeah, I'll definitely share a sample with you when I open one. Oh, um, that would be beautiful. Because I bet, you, I bet you that tastes like gold money, dude. <laughs> I mean, the Allardyce, I, I absolutely love. It. Um, Get back to this one. The, with the water on the palate, it brings a lot of more spices and black pepper up front, caliente pepper, like like kind of hot spice. Um, but the finish is a bit bland with the water. I don't like it as much, but it does bring some mint, which is kind of interesting to the finish. Um, there's no mil minerality to it, even with the walnut kind of note. Some people get this as a, they, it comes off as a bitter dram to them, but to me, it's more of a nice balanced dram. I don't, I mean, I might get a walnut tinge, but it's not like in my face kind of thing. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. So I give it. I give it a four out of five. I think it's. I think it's. Nice. It's, it's great, but it's not kick ass. But it's definitely not average. It's you yeah. know. I think it's four is kind of like the fairest. I was about to give it a three point seven five, and then I thought, you know, it's it, it's a little bit better than that. Just a little what did the price run you on a, on a bottle of that? Sixty bucks, man. Sixty bucks. Oh wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. sixteen years. I mean. You know, you, you, you can't get a 16-year-old, uh, mm -hmm. like a Lagavulin 16, you can't get for $60. There's no yeah, way. You can get a Lagavulin 16 for $90 these <laughs> days. <laughs> you cannot get this in the United States, though, so don't ever plan on getting this in the United States. Unfortunately, oh, you have to order it, yeah. Have you seen any independent bottlings of that stuff? Or like yeah. a distillery, rather? Oh, yeah. And, and one thing I forgot to mention is they use this primarily in Johnny Walker. This is their their juice that goes in a lot of the high end Johnny Walker stuff. I don't see them using this in red, but I do see them using this. Maybe not even in black, but I bet you they use this in green, um, platinum, swing, and probably blue. Even they probably use it for that. I'm, I'm thinking. To what extent? I'm not sure because Diageo unfortunately is not really good about recipe sharing. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wish they were like compass box where you could just be like, "Hey, what are you guys putting in this?" and they just give it right. to you. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, I hear you on that. Well, it comes with four, man, especially at sixty dollars, man, that's that's a steal. Four point five, four out of five. You said at sixty bucks. Take take note, y'all. I mean, that seems like a good pour. Everyone just joined us. I was just talking about you, man. Good, this, this, I'm glad you made it. Uh, Dalyuin, um Volume in, uh, 16, you have to order it, uh, everyone, to hopefully you get a chance to. Since you're a sherry guy, I think you would really like this. I'd be surprised if you didn't. Yeah, what's up, everyone? I'm not sure if I know you, but cheers. Uh, welcome to the, uh, what is this now? Two the whiskey. Doing this? Yeah, the whiskey chat of the century. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tuesday yeah. Ever, everyone, uh, he also is a, a fellow DC and like used to be before you moved off to Philly. He uh, works at NASA down uh, oh, right like, like a block away from me where I used to go into the office. We're not going to the office anymore anytime soon, but yeah, right. <laughs> it's still uh, nice to have a neighbor. He decided to start with a little always, more. Lock. Always, always. Good, Good choice, Dram. Which, which bottle did you open, Dram? Just curious. Yeah, everyone, I had to get this from overseas. Uh, if you do a little homework, you know, a thousand corks, wine searcher, that kind of thing, you should be able to find it for about 60 bucks. Uh, plus shipping, maybe add a bottle, maybe for, you know, 65, 70 bucks, you could probably get your hands on it and uh, even get another bottle with it, too. So, yeah, that's a great price, man. Jeez. 60 bucks but that, the player athel 12 was even better at 40 or whatever it was i mean it was 
really cheap. I couldn't believe how cheap that was. Yeah. And it was, I mean, for even for a 12 year old, it's solid. Yeah, definitely. So in terms of the flora and fauna range, do you have um, some other ones that you have yet to try? And if so, or if not, like, which, what do you recommend so far for folks who are, you know, interested in getting into this range of um, uh, whiskeys from Diageo? That's a good question. Let me see if I still have, um, I had a nice little uh, spreadsheet I was keeping from when we were doing our um, venture through Scotland and doing all the distilleries. Um, I kept a, a, a kind of a download of an old um, excerpt from when we were looking at it, but I'm wondering if I still have it in here. Give me one second to see if I can pull it yeah. up. Yeah. I think I do have it here. And um, just off the top of my head, the, the Dalyuin definitely is, um, I would say, is the uh, one of the best, if not the best, of the series. The Blair Athel 12 is, is definitely up there, maybe even a close second, uh, if not a first as well. Um, the Ben Rennes was really good. We recently looked at. That was uh, excellent. Let me go by here and look and see if uh, – I'll give you. It's funny. I'll, I'll do a kind of a quick thing about things that you guys probably wouldn't have heard of. Uh, I've already talked about the Avon Dark being the worst thing ever. I won't go into that again. But the uh, the Elisa Bay three year inaugural release. That's that's a not a foreign final bottle, but it's a new distillery. Elisa Bay is definitely worth a look to all you guys if you're interested in trying a new distillery. That's that's. I think they just finally had. Um, a five or a ten year i can't remember which one it was but they do a sweet smoke version they have lots of different versions and elisa bay is pretty good well priced i, I would definitely get into that let me see if i can find the fauna, fauna bottle uh the tenonic i would skip that was not a not a fun one uh i think we did a glenn ord or glenn spay or both let me see something real fast because i know those have foreign fauna bottles let me see if uh the Glen Spay was a 12-year Barry Brothers. No, that was a different one. And the, the Glen Order was a 12-year Ad uh, a Rattray. How do you say it? Is it the Rattray? Do you know what I'm talking about? Those independent bottlings? A.D. Rattray? Is that how you say it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. I'm actually not sure. <laughs> if anyone uh, knows. Talking, but I know which one you're talking about. I've seen it before. If anybody knows in the in the channel, uh, type out the phonetics and how you say the A.D. Rattray, or is it Rattra? I'm not sure how you say that, but that was the other uh, version. I know we had, maybe it was the Mocknamore. I know we had a, a yeah, the Mocknamore foreign fauna bottle. I would skip. Oh, that was like a, I gave it like a, let me see, a 2.25. So that Ooh. should tell you a lot. Yeah. Right. I'm going to avoid that. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with the Tinnanik. I, I think I gave that like a pretty bad, uh, let me see if I can give you the actual score yeah 2.5 on the tenonic uh it just so you, so you know I'm, I'm not crazy the average from the group was 1.5 so there you go wow yeah <laughs> so it sounds like the floor and fauna range really is hit and miss it, it is it, it, it definitely very much is and i think it, it might be why it just never really i mean even though people know of it it's not a I was what I would call a popular, you know, series uh, presently. Maybe that's why, because it's, it's like you got to know which distilleries are worth, you know, picking up versus the one not. But uh, I'd say Ben Rennes, Dalian, um and the uh, Blair Athol are the top three that I would definitely give it a chance. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, that's definitely good to know. I've not had. Uh, as somebody who's not had any of them, you know, um, <laughs> it sounds like I'm glad you're tasting them and not me. <laughs> that, that is the benefit of the whiskey channel, my that's friend. That's the way it works, ain't it? That's the way it works. Um, but if you ever find a Rose Bank, that's a unicorn bottle, my friend, or a Kalila a Flora Fauna bottle, holy shit, you better pick that up. <laughs> really? Kalila? Kalila has an old school version uh, in Rose Bank. A, a dead distillery has a, a Pity Vac. Pity Vac has got a, a, a good one. And oh, yeah, wow, any little mill, any of the dead distilleries that have yeah. one final bottle, I would definitely keep your eyes out on those. Good deal. I will definitely do that. Have you uh, picked up anything new this week other than these floor and funnel bottles? I did. I picked up a Binrack 21, which is around here <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> 
a bin rack 21 and i found it for like this is no joke like 99 dollars. I, I was like what <laughs> How right. can I pass that up? Yeah, Ben Rank twenty one for ninety nine dollars. Well, when I looked at, guess who the the master blender was for this this bottle when I picked it up, which kind of sent a little shiver up my spine. Uh, uh, what's your name, Rachel Berry? <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> How'd you know? Uh, you're not the only one who that sends shivers up the spine of. Although, uh, yeah. Uh, Lucky, yes. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> well, I'm not going to spoil the review, but she pleasantly surprised me a little with this one. Maybe not blow my socks off, but I'll have to. I, I just, you know, got the neck the neck pour in recently, just to give it like a, a kind of a preliminary taste. And so far, it's actually good. My 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 fear now is it's going to do what the Mortlock 15 bottle did to me. And I'll I got a funny story for you for that one. Remember how you were talking about the Glen Scotia incident with the cloudiness and all that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you had a you had a bottle that um that that you um. Didn't, I mean, it got better with time, didn't it? Or is it not? Are you talking about the Glen Scotia? Yeah. Didn't it get better with time? No? That's a relative statement. Uh, oh, okay. It has, it still maintains a, um, yeah. Just, just for factor. Yeah, it, there is something off about it that I, I, there's either a note that I've never had in my life in a whiskey or there's something wrong with it. Um, for the last couple of weeks on my happy hour, which I do before, you know, for Telex's show, I've been doing a continuing saga of a Glen Scotia hand-filled 10-year-old bottle that I, is from the distillery that I bought that uh, has a very funky note and um, has led to some really good chats, <laughs> let's just say. I've been providing an update each week on my channels, uh, 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 happy hour before the show. But uh, I'd be curious if, if there's an issue you're saying with this uh, uh, Mortlock 15 that you might think is similar. Well, it was weird. Like when I first opened it, and even like halfway through the bottle, I thought it was pretty good. I gave it a four point two five, which for me is is a oh, really wow. good score. I mean, I gave the black a four point two five, and you know, and, and that was a damn good whiskey, and it was good through the whole bottle. This one, once I went past the halfway and got to like the three quarters, I say the first three quarters were were, were great. The last part, it went from a 4.25 to a 3.25. The finish just fucking just like went, just vanished. Really? And the power, the, even at, I mean, it's only 46%, but maybe the ABV was just too low for it to last for a, a bit, but I didn't have the bottle for that long. Maybe like a couple months. So, you know, it wasn't like oh, a lot. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like the, the first three fours were 4.25, but the last, uh, so uh, what I did was I went back to my old review, uh, the video, and I just typed a comment saying, Hey guys, you know, even though this is a great bottle, you better drink it fucking fast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was it cloudy in the way that this bottle no. was cloudy? <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't cloudy. I thought that you were going to say that after, you know, you gave it some time, it got better. But no, this more like was actually the opposite. I gave it some time and it went to shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer. Um, Steven could tell you, like, I was surprised. I even wrote to Steven after the fact, and I said, these were all my notes that I got when I first tasted this damn thing. And it was, you know, 4.25. And sure enough, I even tasted it with them. I, I, I sent some salsa out. You know, as a we, we get together on the side uh, ever so yeah. often, and him and like four or five other Nashville buddies, and we you know got to it and, and did a little tasting, and it just fell flat. I couldn't believe how mm. flat it fell, and it wasn't just me; it was everybody was kind of like, huh? B, C, and D are decent, but A was was not that good. But wow, it was the oxidation. I swear, because it was not like when I first had yeah. it. And here I was hoping that the oxidization was was going to save this Glen Scotia. Sometimes it does. So far, so far, not so much. But sometimes it does. Like the the I don't know how that works. The Glenjornic peated portwood. I had to let sit out for forty five minutes before I could even drink it. 
I mean, it does happen the opposite, I think, of a lot of the trams too, where you like like a bottle like that, I would actually pour into a true decanter and and let air out. And there's other bottles I've had that's like that. I'm trying to remember there was one recently I had that was kinda like that where if you didn't let it sit out and I'm talking, oh, the Glenmore 18. The Glenmore 18, I hated it the first, like, six months I had it. And finally, after six to eight months, I poured it, and it was great. It's it's just the weirdest thing. <laughs> wow. Is that Glenmore 18, 40%? I'm just curious. 40 seems a little low, but let me let me do a quick uh, a quick look real fast. Glenmore is one of those distilleries I see is always at like really good prices. They have a ton of different finishes, similar to to Tomatin. Yeah, uh, give, give me one second. I'll be right back. Yeah. The suspense builds. Has anybody in the chat had uh, the Glenmora 18 or any of these like relatively lower price 18 year olds? Last week I did a, I talked about the Loch Lomond 18. I'd be curious. It's a 47.2 actually. Wow. Okay. That's not what I expected. Yeah, me, ne me neither. I thought it was. I, I could have swore when you said forty, I was like, "Well, it's probably low, but it's probably not that low." I thought maybe yeah. forty-three or forty-six, but it's actually forty-seven point two to be exact. That's and it's it's first fill, it's first fill American oak. I mean, it's 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 funny because like the first time I tasted it, it it felt like it was really muted, like a muted trumpet kind of a feeling. And I swear, after six eight months having the bottle open and just let it, you know, not paying attention to it for a long time. I thought, you know, if I have guests over, I might offer it to them if they don't know whiskey kind of thing. But man, I'm glad I came back to it. Uh, at Kalila 17 Unpeated was the same damn thing. I, I did. I hated it the first, like almost a year that I had it. I, I just, it was just too salty, olivey. It was just nasty. And then after about a, a year, it, when I got halfway through it, then I came back to it. It was the 4.75 out of 5. It was crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it went from a 2.75 to a 4.75 just from oxidation. I swear I'm to God. Go on, yeah, this is bringing up an interesting thing. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Glenmore 18 was not an expensive whiskey. It was not. The, thankfully, the Glenmores are... Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've got the list here. I usually have a little list to look at, but I, 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 it was it was literally probably around a hundred bucks. It was not expensive. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so still like a decent price. I was curious because um, last weekend I was chatting about this on my happy hour. Was I had I came across a bottle of the Loch Lomond 18 non chill 46 percent 60 dollars single malt. Which is the cheapest single malt eighteen year old I've ever seen, and I was curious if there are any that you have had or recommend that you would say are like those bargain finds of an eighteen year old or older whiskey that are just stupid good for their price. Um, and I thought maybe the Glenmora would fall into that range. You know, another one I think of off the top of my head is Tomatin eighteen or Tomatin. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is not, you know, what's 80 bucks, 75 bucks. I mean, for an 18 year old single malt at these days is a crazy price. But curious if there's any diamonds in the rough that you know of outside of those that, that you would recommend. Yeah, I would. If, if, I, if I had the money and still and never had the Glamora before, uh, even though I do like the 15 sherry cask, um, I would buy an 18. I would literally pour it into a decanter, a true, like what you would use for wine, and then I would enjoy it, and I bet you it would be it would be money. Um, one that's like that, that's an eighteen, that's not um, crazy expensive. Now that is the that's the catch. Let me bring up my little. I mean, we say this while well, you're sipping a Dalwini sixteen, and I'm just sipping a Highland Park twenty one. <laughs> not exactly like we're uh, living it right now, but but I do think that it's an interesting thing because as you're noticing in the whiskey, at, le at least in the Scotch world. Obviously, this has been true in the bourbon world, but like, you know, we have the prices going up. Some of it is due to a tariff, but, you know, increasingly, so, I mean, you look at things that are even like Springbank 15, I'm seeing for 130, 140 bucks. Wow. Folks are going to start looking and maybe distillers are going to start putting things out 
that are gonna you know try to appeal to that sub hundred dollar range even with age statements you know uh one i think of for example is the highland park 16 um you know twisted tattoo which i think is a pretty good one that's a damn good company. price yeah. if you can think of any like higher age statements and i'm thinking 15 you know, older than 15 years that are under 100 bucks Let's do a quick run through. I mean, I would skip the Abelara 18 all day. It's just and the, not. Uh, and the Abelara 16. It's just not that gr good of a, a dram. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say all these, but like the Aaron 18 was would probably be a decent price, I would think. And I think it would be worth your time, an Aaron 18, if you could find one. Uh, they're not readily available in a lot of whiskey shops, but if you, if you know a decent like selection whiskey shop you'd be surprised that you could find like i found a 16 just an old 16 just sitting there that was definitely like 60 70 bucks tops it wasn't a great whiskey actually either uh everyone can attest to that it wasn't the best thing but i mean it was a 16 year old for a good price uh the 18 yeah. the new 18 was probably better i've heard that their line has gotten actually better than the last uh run I would definitely check it out. Now, price-wise, do you know what the Ben Ryak 18 runs for? Because the 21 was pretty cheap. I would think a Ben Ryak 18 would be money. The Ben Romick. Um, oh, Ben Ryak. Oh, Ben Ryak. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah that, that's one I think might be – I have not had the 18. I would I would definitely seek it out because I got that twenty one for I swear to God it was around a hundred bucks and I'm sure you can get the eighteen one year old whiskey for a hundred bucks. Yeah, that's amazing. The um, I'm trying to think if I know Bladnock has a seventeen, and I, the prices though tend to be on the higher side. I'll probably skip that one for now. But I I mean I've had the fifteen and love the the Bladnock. I think it was like one twenty though for the fifteen, a little on the high side. But you know, we'll we'll, we'll skip that one for now. Yeah. Uh, let me think. I, I would definitely skip Cardew. I'm not a big Cardew fan. Um, the Krigelic is great, but it's the price. It's pricey for that seventeen. Um, mm -hmm. I would, I would skip Dalmore definitely. Um, <laughs> there's no Dalmore. There's no Dalmore under a hundred dollars anymore, is there? <laughs> That's true. You couldn't even get the damn twelve for under a hundred dollars probably nowadays. I'm not joking, man. The eighteen, yeah, like, two hundred twenty dollars for the eighteen. I'm like, you got to be out of your fucking mind. Yeah, no, God no. Oh, oh, Deanston eighteen might not. I'm trying to remember. No, nah, that's probably that's over a hundred. That's that's a good one. That's a good one to think about. Yeah, that that's one's probably in the range. I mean, maybe like let's let's be fair. Like you know, there are some that are going to be in the like one ten range. But I mean, I'm saying for in general for eighteen year old whiskeys to even find them sub one twenty these days, is, it's really fucking hard. I mean, I'm thinking mm -hmm. about a couple that are right in that range. The cheapest I've ever seen is the Loch Lomond eighteen, but Tomatin eighteen. I mean, Glen G eighteen, I can still find in that hundred or less. Glen Scotia eighteen, I've seen in that like one ten range. I mean, and again, these are good whiskeys that are flying at that you know really the lowest you can possibly find them. Steven's saying to both of us that the new Aaron eighteen is one he's interested in. Grab it for yeah. receive, super cheap. But that's definitely I think going to be on my radar because I need to get a nice Aaron. Uh, proper bottle because i don't really don't have one yet um the uh do you know what the glen rothis goes for 18 that form that i was thinking of too i mean that's one i think you can find in the lower 100s I that mean, would be what, worth it really little... think about it telix i mean think about conversely the ones that are outrageously priced for 18s i mean glendronic springbank I mean, obviously, Lafroy, we can't get anymore. I mean, some of these, I mean, Highland Park 18 is one that's maintained some relative price range, but there's questions about whether or not it's as good as the old one used to be. I mean, these are increasingly hard to come by. Talisker 18, I mean, that's like a $160 bottle these days. What's the price for the new Old Pulteney 18, do you know? Ooh, that's a good question. Um let me just take a quick look. While you're looking at that, I just want to say that the Glenrothes has got a new line, and the Glenrothes new line is really good. So if their price for the 18 is reasonable, I would definitely pick that sucker up pretty fast because that's a good uh, new line they have. Man, old Paul needs like 140, man. Ooh, 140. That's, 
Uh, let me see. And I bet you same with the ball blair. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you a hidden, hidden gem. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna punch myself for saying this because I haven't <laughs> even got, I haven't got myself a bottle of this stuff yet. But I had a sample of it, and it's, it, you know, how the Glen Scotia 15 kind of knocked everyone's socks off to an extent because it was. Uh, very, that was my whiskey of the year last year. <laughs> it's very low price, but it's still a great 15. Yeah. I know it's not 18, but look out for the Nokendo, uh, the K N O C K A N D O, not knock do, knock do yeah, is, yeah, 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 not 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 do because knock do is like the Enoch stuff, but not Kando. Right, 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 right. Is there are space. Why they call it Enoch, so to differentiate. Yeah, there. <laughs> They're a Diageo owned space side uh, distillery. That 15 is actually pretty damn good. I, I never see it. I don't, I never, you know, I haven't s sought it out yet, but I am going to. Uh, that one, I'm sure if they have a, an 18, I know they have a 15. That one is definitely worth a look. It was, it was at least a 3.5 to 4, you know, when we were doing the, the, the voyage across Scotland. Oh man, I'm looking for 18s. What, what, what was your overall impression again of the Loch Lomond 18? Were you like, was it so, kind of? Yeah, I haven't done a review like a full review. Of it. Oh, My okay. Overall impression was that it was. <laughs> it drank like a little bit younger than an 18. Again, I'm gonna just go. I mean, I paid 60 bucks, and I I see it average around 70. So take that for what it's worth. 46 percent non chill. It had kind of a root vegetable note to it that was very, it was very unique. I'll put it that way. It was very unique. I'm not sure where it's going to go. Um, did it meet like the things that I really enjoy in a single malt? Not so much. Do I think it was a quality whiskey for that price? Yeah. <laughs> if, if someone's a fan of a vegetal dram, yeah. would, you would choose. Yeah, cause oh, right. At the price, yeah, for sure. Another one like that is Glen Ord. Glen Ord is not a known distillery by any means, but they are a Diageo, and I think they do have. A, I think they're Diageo. Let me see real fast. I better not mess this up. Glen Ord is yeah, it's a Diageo thing. It's a uh, they they. I had a, a dram of that, and it's really good. But man, it's the, the you know how I do a theme to the dram when I do my distiller writes right up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The song for that one was "We Are the Vegetables" by NXS when they were a punk band back when they, they first started. They had a song called "We Are the Vegetables," and that was the theme. Well played, the That's a deep cut right there. That's a very oh man, Mike Hutchinson doing like like hardcore, like not hardcore, but like doing like old school punk stuff. It was yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, the eighties punk, and not Dead Kennedys, but like oh no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jill no, Jill Briaffer for the win, but no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody in the comments please let us know if you've had the Royal Brockla 18? I have seen that available at the local shop here. It's it, it's not a very well known distillery either, but Royal Brockla 18 is it worth the price? I'm curious. Let me know about that one while I go on. Longmorn 16. If that's if, if you can find it for a good price, and I think it's around a hundred bucks, that's definitely worth a pickup. I like the Longmorn 16 a lot. Um, yeah, that's one I've not had. That's that should be on your radar, I'm man. A hard time finding. It, 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 you can definitely find it because the local one, even in Saverna Park here in Maryland, has it uh, like a 16. Uh, and I've seen it a lot and in a lot of places. Uh, so I know you can get, you might not be able to get it like at the Total Wine and Spirits kind of place. But yeah. if you know any, if you if you have any states that are near, what, what's the closest state to you that doesn't have the state run thing? New Jersey. New Jersey is where you should go. Well, I would go I, yeah. I got a few places that are. Part of my regular hunting grounds. <laughs> yeah, I go over there if I'm not finding what I want at the local shops here in PA. Yeah. Um, Mortlock and Oban are so expensive. I'm not even going to look at those. The Oban 18 is so overpriced. Oban uh, 18, like, the thing about Oban 18 is there are a few whiskeys that I've found that are, like, as underwhelming and only the price that they're at, not because of demand, but because of the supply that are just not going to meet your price point at all. Like open 18, I'm telling you, that's like a $150 bottle. And I can think of 
five 18 year olds off the top of my head in a second that I would buy over the open 18. Oh, look at Steven Bastard. He's even going to sample a lot more 30. Jeez, man. I bet that's glorious. <laughs> Tell me if you like that one, Stephen. I bet it's good. And tell me if it's savory, because usually when I have a longmorn, it reminds me of like an Ethiopian sambusa, like a really uh, a very savory uh, uh, pocket of, of great vegetable slash spicy goodness. <laughs> Looks like Dram's had the Brackler range, but it didn't wow him. I'm not surprised. I've, had, I've kind of like with the Royal Lotnagar, it's kind of similar where it's, it's okay, but it's not going to like – you know, knock your socks off. Looks like, uh, yeah, Lost Cause is like open 18, easy to drink. We won't buy another one. I think yeah. somebody said he got it for, uh, yeah, Jason got it for 109. That's crazy. Wow. That's a really good okay. price. At 109, I'd buy three bottles of it for sure. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, because I've never seen it under like 120 to 130. Yeah, I hardly see it under 150, which That's is nuts. absurd in my opinion. Going back, like, uh, how about a Tamdu 15? Have you had the Tamdu 15 yet? Yeah, I have had the Tamdu 15. That's a really good pour. Um, I need to get my hands on that. I, I love the, the the batches. I've had one, two, and three. I love the Dabilia Dram, which is a really, really spicy, kick-ass Dram. Uh, but I haven't had the 15 yet. Do they have an 18? I don't even think they have an 18. I'm not sure. They have a 10, which I think is surprisingly good. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I haven't had a 10, 10 that I think is really good. Yeah. I bet that's a really good price too, isn't it? Or do you know what the price is on it? Uh, the 10 was like in that 50, 60 range. So a little bit more. I mean, again, Tamdu is not a huge, you know, there's not a, it's not a, you know, something, it's not Glenlivet, right? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, it was in that, I think in the, like for 50, it, it's kind of a uh, Deanston prices. If you know gotcha. it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think 50 bucks. Good. It's a good pour. I wouldn't go too much higher than that. But. I'll have to get my hands on that one too. Have you ever, uh, one. Tobermory is Leche, right? Yes. Okay. Tobermory, um, I had a 20, when I was at a, um, a DC tasting with my, my buddy, uh, Tosh, he, kind of gravitated towards the Tobermory stand. I had their Lechegg 18, and I love it. I even have a, a bottle somewhere that uh, that was good. It, I'm not sure what – I think it was over 100, though, unfortunately, but still a really good dram. The Tobermory 21 was not peated, and it was really damn good tasting. It had the age factor definitely there. I, I don't know if they what their prices though are on their 18 or 21 regular – that might be worth a look. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, like one thing is, is as some of these distilleries become, you know, overpriced and harder to get, you know, there are, there are newer ones that I think are of high quality that are putting out tons of good stuff. For, for example, Glen Alec. Oh yeah. Like my God, have you seen this whole uh, uh, wood age series that they've been putting out? Rye. They just put out a 12 PX. Wow. And a lot of stuff coming out of Glen Allocky that I think, man, that's going to be, I mean, if it, it already is, I think for a lot of folks, one of the distilleries to chase, but I mean, I think they're increasingly just going to get more and more popular. They're putting out, I've never had their 18, but man, they are putting out a lot of good stuff. Looks like Trooper found a Deanston 18 online for 87 bucks. That is a steal. Yeah, I'll buy it. For sure. I, I think for me, I had to pay at least one ten to one twenty. Uh, I'm I'm guessing, but I know it was over a hundred dollars. Yeah, Deanston's one of those that that came in at really good prices for a while. But I think it's changed. I got my I have a Deanston twenty Oloroso for one forty, and I bet you now it's two hundred. It's just one of those whiskeys that you know they're harder and harder to get. Ah, uh, so Andrew Page just brought up one that is an interesting. Uh, Glenn, Glenn going 18. Uh, yeah, I think I Andrew, Glenn going 18. I, it's funny because I think I have to agree with Stephen for this. Even though the, the price for the 18 is a lot lower, for, for Glenn going, it's one of those that I would even consider saving for the 25 because it's the mouth coat. This doesn't get there until you get to the higher ABV ones. And to get the high ABV, I think you have to go 25, don't you? 
Yeah, the the twenty one and the tw and the eighteen are forty three percent. See, that's where it kills me. Yeah. So I agree with you. I I had a Glen going eighteen, which I got for yeah around a hundred. Uh, it was disappointing, but here's what I would say. For me, when it comes to Glen Goyne, I've only had a sample of it, but the 25 is amazing. If you, but the diamond in the rough at a reasonable price, but it's getting harder and harder to find, is the 15. The Glen Goyne 15, which is in that 70 to 80 range, in my opinion, is not only better than the 18, wow. but is better or close to as good as the 21. And that's a okay. I'll make it. The Glen Goyne 15 is fantastic. And wow. there this was a number that, that was being discontinued. I don't know if that's confirmed, but it is harder and harder to find. But I'm telling you, if you find it in uh, the I'd take that over the 18 any day. Yeah. It looks like everyone's saying that the Tamdu 10 was discontinued, but they released a new line of 12, 15, and 18. Well, that's good to know, uh, everyone, because I would love to try an 18 version of Tamdu if the price is right. Yep. Tamdu is another one like Glen Alecky, where I think the more that they put out, the more that you're going to want. You know, like they're just putting out a lot of good stuff. Looks like uh, Daniel can find the 15. So the 15, and maybe somebody in the chat can confirm this. I've heard the 15 is is, and I'm thinking Dram Dude in specific if if he's still here, because I know we've chatted about the Glen going 15 before, but I'm telling you. The Glen Goyne 15 is the winner of their core range outside of the 25. The 21 I, I've never had, but I see it upwards of $200 in some places, and it's 43%. I just won't do it. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't. Yeah. And you don't love Glen Goyne just because of their mouthfeel, from what I remember. You said it was kind of a lighter whiskey, which I understand, but the 15 you might be surprised by. It's a little more robust despite similar aging of the 18, but the 18 I thought was just – Eh, give me so, a, you know, it was meh. It was just not amazing. Yeah, I was lucky enough to have the 18 and 21 at a tasting. I, I enjoyed it, but yeah, the, the mouth coat was ultra thin. And for the price, I thought, man, it'd be nice to have in higher ABV. And when, I think it was you or somebody was telling me about the 25 being like a step up in ABV. I'm like, ooh. I have a bottle of 25. Right behind me, actually. Oh, have, lucky bastard. <laughs> it is 48%. I'm going to open that up later this year. I, I got to save it for a, uh, a special occasion. I just opened my Highland Park 21 for my hundredth review this week. So I, I, I gotta, I got, you know, when it comes to these expensive bottles, I, you know, I'm the kind of guy that's got to do it rather sparingly. I don't got a lot too much funds to spend on such things, but no, I hear you. Congratulations on the hundred reviews too. That's I yeah, know it's, uh, it's cool, man. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, it'll drop Friday. If anybody's interested in learning about the new Highland park 21, uh, I'm sipping some right now. It's good. I don't okay. know if it's $300 good, but well, Jame also loves the 15. Yeah. Is Blake the 21, though, is when it's around 120. Okay. It's, uh, 20, yeah. But, man, I, I, Dram Dude might see, I mean, California's got such good whiskey prices for the most part. I don't see Glen going 21 for 120 bucks. I see Glen going 18 for 120 bucks. I see Glen 21 for like 180, 170, which ah, I just can't pull for 43%, you know? Hopefully, uh, Remedy uh, Liquors has it because they have really good prices. Oh, uh, yeah. Remedy is great. Yeah. Everyone's got to go. Fair winds to you, everyone. And hopefully, uh, good to see, we'll you. see you soon. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm glad to see you. I was just talking about having seen you in a while. So it's good to, that you came by. And, and check out Malt Muser's channel when you get a chance. Yeah. Cheers, man. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah. I got to keep my eyes. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen or, or had the, the 15 going. Um, I, I haven't been lucky enough to have the cast strength stuff, which is really good. The cast strength bottle. From Glen I haven't had that one either. That's really good. That 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 one is is definitely worth it because it's got a heavier mouth coat with the higher ABV, which is nice. But uh, you don't see it very often. I was lucky enough to have a buddy in DC that runs a, a Japanese ramen uh, kind of thing. He he's like the beverage manager there, and he had uh, yeah. The like Daikaya. Was it Daikaya? No, this is Jin uh, okay. Stew, something like that. It was, uh, I, I forgot what station. It's pretty close to either U Street or, or one of the metro stations because sure. I, was, I was able to walk, you know, up there. Man, if you like ramen and you are anywhere near D.C., do check out Daikaya. 
Oh, I know what you're talking about. It's Chinatown next to uh -huh. the Absolute uh -huh. Thai. Yeah. See, Absolute Thai is my favorite Thai place that I always used to go to. Yeah, and, man. And, and Daikaya is like literally ne right next door to he, it. He, he <laughs> kills it with that stuff, man. Uh, oh my God, there are so many good good whiskey whiskey. Or I'm sorry, whiskey. Good ramen and just uh, 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 Southeast Asian restaurants. There, oh my God. Well, see, Tosh was was really cool. I ran into him when we were doing like a Scotch for Dummies show, and we were got to talking about the Ardbeg releases. And he was the one that told me where to go get the get the uh, Kelpie and the Dark Cove and the uh, the Drum and all the committee releases really early in Virginia. And uh, it, sure enough, he was right. I was able to get them every year. It seems like I, I can, you know snack yep. really early and uh he when you go down to jinsu i think it's called it's uh it's it's not just a japanese like in a restaurant they have a, a full-fledged whiskey bar like a really good one too and uh they got japanese stuff scotch of course and and not just the run-of-the-mill stuff they have like they had the uh, teapot dram they That's had what I look to. yeah they had all that stuff, the cast strength, and yeah. I was surprised at the selection they had. But the only reason is because he's a really good whiskey uh, guy. He goes by Scotch and Sip on Instagram. So oh, okay, might, I'll check that out for sure, for sure. Yeah, uh, he's really big in the cigars too. So Scotch and Sip, if uh, if you see him on Instagram, that's uh, Tosh from DC. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely check that out. Oh, you know what? I think I actually know who you're talking about because I've seen. He had YouTube channel. He has a YouTube channel too, right? I don't know if he. I don't think he does YouTube, but he does do a lot of Instagram and a lot of um, like in person tastings. Sure. He, he knows a lot of um, like the ambassadors and stuff, just by you know running into them at, at all the tastings and stuff. And it's fun. I just what kills me is spending three hundred dollars and and them running out of juice, man. I just. I mean, that's just crazy to me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Totally. Once you have once it happens to you a couple of times, it's like never again. <laughs> yep, I'm with you on that 100, percent my friend. I'll just invite a few good friends that I know have good bottles and be like, you know, screw it, <laughs> we'll do our own whiskey fest. <laughs> yeah, because we're gonna buy the bottles anyways. It's like we might <laughs> exactly more fun to share. Because if you have a few bottles, I bring a few bottles. Stephen brings a few bottles. Dram brings a few bottles. Hell, yep. right there, we've already got you know ten, fifteen bottles. And yep. if they're all pretty good, <laughs> then I mean, you've already beat any whiskey expo festival that you can give. You know, yeah, have. totally, totally. And like, yeah, they're the, that's the worst. I mean, I went to a, a whiskey festival, and like, yeah, it was. A, I had a similar experience where, you know, I showed up maybe a half hour after it started. And by the time I got through everything, half the stuff was gone. And I was like, man, come on, you know, now I'm just sipping a, you know, something I've already had, which is a real big bummer. The worst was Balvenie. I'll never forget going to the Balvenie thing and getting, getting line for the tune, you know, and it's like the very beginning. It wasn't like we waited an hour and then <laughs> went. It was right from the beginning. I swear to God, they were, they had that much of tune left. We're talking like, bottom of the barrel <laughs> literally and i'm like not only are you guys overcharging for this because it's not worth 375 for that it's just not worth it <laughs> dude i mean you thought i mean if you find those bottles for 375 you're lucky man i've seen that thing for more than that i've seen it for five six hundred bucks it's it's crazy it's like mckellen prices man it's yeah. just not worth it <laughs> I mean, not to not McKellen. I think McKellen's got some good stuff, but to spend, to spend thousands of dollars for something that's not, you know, mm -hmm. the ultimate craft. I mean, if if Springbank released a thirty-year-old that was had fifteen cast maturations, was all done by hand, bottled in, in every, everything was in house, then I could understand charging an armload for it, but. Right. <laughs> it's mass produced and putting some shiny capsule that you can open up and have a key and all that shit. Fuck all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I got to go get a water uh, refill real quick, buddy. So I'm going to uh, step away for a sec, but I'll be back shortly. No problem. I'll catch up on some comments while you're taking off there a little bit. Let's uh, go up to uh, Richie Z's liquor stores are requiring mass to enter and purchase. Yeah, uh, thankfully, I, I don't think it's a bad thing though, because I tell you what, man, it's 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 really rough. Uh, I, I'm tempted just to call my store and say, "Hey, 
this is what I want. Bring it curbside. Give it to me. I'll pay for it. You know, through you could scan my thing or whatever through the window and, and call it a day because I don't want to be around anybody unless I have to. <laughs> Where are you getting these? Pro- oh, <laughs> I don't know prices. It's California, man. They had some of the things. Not not all the time, but uh, they have good prices in certain bottles. I know Stephen was saying. I'll get to that in a second. That one of them was really expensive. Um, Silver Look Whiskey Club. Good to see you. Glengoyne Twenty One used to be one sixty nine about a year ago, but now it's two twenty nine. That is crazy money. It, it's just too crazy. Yeah, he's seen the price on Remedy was like for the twenty one was two hundred bucks plus shipping. That's that is high. No thanks, mess Whiskey Marauder. <laughs> exactly. I don't blame you, man. Local one of spirit stores. Sometimes they have better deals. Local wine and spirit stores. Do you uh, in California, Dram? Do you guys have like state run and private owned, or what do you mean by that? Are you talking about just the the mom and pop shops that don't do like online uh, stuff? They just do like local sales, that type of thing. Maybe that's what you're referring to. I, I assuming that's where I found most of the best deals. Yeah. Yeah, Glenglowing Cast Strength is great. Have the batch six. Any idea what the age might be? If I had to take a guess, Andrew, and this is just going by my feel and and experience, and, and I'm thinking at least they have at a minimum age of 15, if not 18, in the 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 group as far as how it's like self blended or if it's just a, do you know if it's a single cask? How they, is it, is there any blending going on or is it all one age? I'm assuming that they don't do it. It's an NAS because they do a blend after the fact, but don't quote me on that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn. If, if it is a, a self blend with other older stuff, I'm thinking it's got to have some 15 to 18 in there because it's that good. But, do it for the gram. Do it for the dram. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, Richie Z, if you're taking off, uh, good to see you, man. Uh, hopefully, come back again soon. Let's see. What's your all thoughts on the Altmore 21? 220. Jesus, man, that's a lot of money. Um, let me do this for you, Daniel. Just, just to give you kind of a, a preparation of sorts. Let me bring up my um, Altmore 18 uh, review. And that way, it'll give you kind of uh, an idea of what to expect with the 21. Um, I was lucky enough to have a buddy that was gracious enough when we were doing our distillery search to take a look at the uh, 18 which I was surprised because I'm like, well, it can't be cheap. But, you know, let's see what we got here. Okay, the 18. Wow. Uh, one second. Uh, one there, second there, Mald. I'm just going through a review for this guy. Uh, he was asking about what your all's thoughts on the Altmore 21. And I've had the 18, and I wanted to give him kind of a, a baseline to go with what he's kind of going to expect. I think 220 is awfully high. Uh, for the 18, uh, Paul, uh, generously Paul, when Distiller was was the one that had it when we were doing our, our salsa trade-off. And uh, the nose was full of nice vanilla, honeysuckle, barley, and sweet white grapes. The palate was warm it had an inviting layer of buttercream icing, oil, heavy mouth coat. Vanilla was definitely in your face, neat. Uh, the finish was a tad hot with dry alcohol. Put a few drops of water on it, and the, the grapes and light fruit came more to the front forefront. Uh, it had a white wine quality to it. The water helped with the finish for me as well. It had a nice mouth coat, uh, still a buttery finish, but it's far from a complex gram. I gave it a 3.25. It's uh, bread and butter by the New Beats, was the song I chose. Try not to laugh if you look that up. <laughs> Ooh. You ever heard of the New Beats before? I have not. Oh, they're a band from the 60s, right? And when you hear this guy sing, and they had a commercial not too long ago. You might have saw it. Uh, this guy, it's a, it's a 
I don't know if they're British. I can't remember where they're from, but the New Beats is like an old school uh, band. And the guy that sings, sings on a falsetto, he sounds dead up like a classic soul black lady singer. It's crazy. Oh, it, sounds, it sounds dead up like a black lady singing. And, but it's a white dude singing falsetto. It's crazy. Uh, so, yeah, what's that guy from the 80s? Uh, never going to give you up. Oh, Rick Astley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Look up Bread and Butter by the New Beats. <laughs> I'll check it out for sure. I'll definitely check it out. Bread and Butter by the New Beats. That was the theme to that dram. But the, long story short, 220 seems like a great price for a 21 with some extent, but I would be, I would say, try your best to get a sample first. It's just not, you know, it's just not worth it. Especially one of the spirit stores, not big chains. Okay, gotcha, Dram. Sorry. I'm drinking the Almar 18 right now, actually. Oh, there you go. I've never had, I've never had any of the older. I had an Almar 20 at a tasting. It was a independent bottling from that boutique whiskey company. Other than that, I had had. I have a bottle of the Almar 12, which I like quite a bit. Was the Altmar, um the the independent one? Did you get a lot of vanilla and buttery? Yeah, and like honey, suck, honey, grassy. Yeah. Was it good? Did you did you yeah. like it? Oh yeah, I thought it was quite tasty. For was sure. it, was it, it was, reminded me of a little bit of a Glen uh in, in its style. A little bit less fruit, a little bit more herbal, but like very just kind of that sweet vanilla toffee kind of, um, you know, very well rounded, sticky. Was it worth 220 if it was 21 years old? That's where I'm kind of like, oh man, it seems awfully steep to me. 220. That for the 18 or for the 20 year old? For the 21 year old. Ooh, what's the ABV? <laughs> Good question. Let me let me let me look. Uh, I mean, to, I mean, honestly, man, for a 20 some year old whiskey, it's hard to find things that are much cheaper than 20 200 bucks these days. That's very true. I, I would, I would buy it, but I don't know. I wouldn't say that it's maybe not worth that. Altmore is the Gaelic term for big burn. I didn't know that. <laughs> big burn. Oh. Um, I'm looking up the distiller review for the 21. It does really well. It's a 4.34 like average out of 37, you know, 3.34 stars out of five, 37 oh, wow. reviews. It's 46% ABV, which is actually not bad for a 21-year-old. What was the distiller score it? Uh, for this one, they have not yet, but uh, – it's refill hogshead casks, which could be good. Uh, actually, maybe they did. Hold on, let me see something. They might have. Oh, they did. They did. Okay. Fragrant notes of floral honey and malt notes hit your senses before you even put the glass to your nose. As you dig a little deeper, you get some lemony sweet tea, vanilla, and mint. The palate isn't very rich, but has more honey notes, this time more dark amber. The finish shows some milk chocolate and gentle wood spices. This would be a great gateway dram from a bourbon drinker who doesn't think they like scotch they gave it a 90 it's a stephanie morano review she gave it a 90 though out of 100 that's pretty damn good i mean it's fruity and sweet profile i, I, I think i mean that's rough i mean i would, I would probably if you if you like the 18 because he says he's just drinking the 18 if you like the 18 i would definitely go for it because i i was kind of like I wasn't like against it. It just wasn't my um, my favorite. Trooper Henry, have you had the Glen Glen Ten? Wow, what'd you say now? I was. I mean, he's got an amazing list of Glen Goins that he's had. I have not had the twenty one or the twelve, but I've had the. Or I'm sorry, I've had the twelve. I have not had the ten or the twenty one. Um, I am actually sipping some of the teapot. This is the batch seven. Which I really, really like. Me too. <laughs> um, but I have not had the twenty-one or the twelve, and I'd be curious if you've had the ten at all, Trooper. I, I've only had the eighteen and twenty-one from the Glen Goyne series with the cast strength and the teapot. I've never had the in between, like the twelve, the fifteen, or the. Um, I gotta get you the fifteen. The 10. fifteen is awesome. I gotta try that because you, you and a few others were saying that was really good too. So it really is. It's surprisingly good. He's saying that all more eighteen is only ninety one bucks, where the twenty one is one hundred and thirty dollars more. Yikes! That is a very steep price. 
One thirty for the twenty one. That seems like a good price. <laughs> no, one thirty. That's no. He's saying it's one hundred and thirty dollars more than the oh, oh, ninety one. Oh, oh. Yeah, no, no, no. yeah. That's where I was telling. Like, for ninety one sounds like a must buy. That yeah, the eighteen. If you could find the eighteen for ninety one dollars, it's it's a definite buy. Yeah. But you know, I know you want to try it, man. But I would. I would see maybe maybe see if you can uh, do a ooh. I need to make a choice. I would definitely go for the Galaxy Twenty Three. I would for that price. I think it's going to be more interesting. I don't know. I mean, I think Craig Galaxy is again. I've only had the thirteen. It's it's a bit of a. I mean, it's not a novice whiskey, right? It's got a little bit more complexity, a little bit more bitter notes. I don't know what older ones taste like, but yeah, I would I would agree with you. I would definitely go Krigeliki twenty three, Daniel. Um, and and you know, if you can find if you if you know the person selling the twenty one, or if you have a way to you know contact them, try to make a deal because some of these guys will make a deal with you. I've noticed, like if even if they're trying to sell it at two twenty, if it's been sitting there for a year, and and you say, hey, I'll give you two hundred bucks for it right now in cash, a lot of people will say, sure. You'd be surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that completely. I think, look, I mean, you're hard pressed to find 20 whiskeys in that 20 year old range that are in the low 200s these days. And so I think they should all be on the table as, you know, debatable for sure. I mean, this Highland Park 21 that I was, that I cracked, this is US price 325 average. Wow, man. 325. But 15 casts. Now that's where I, I commend them for the craft. Because you're really Agreed. paying for the craft there, you know what I mean? Agreed. But still, I mean, three hundred some dollars, like that's a huge price. Well, my question is, and here's a good, a good kind of evaluation, because the Brook Lottie has a 23 year old Black Arts that's that's really similar in price, right? Because you can find it for three to four. I know it's leaning nowadays more towards the four hundred dollar range, sadly. Yeah. But you could still, if you do your homework, maybe find it for three fifty to three hundred, somewhere around there. It's it. How many casks? I mean, I know it's twenty three years old, so that guy has has a a, a check mark box right off the bat. But what do you know? How many casks or what they use to mature that? I don't yeah, think they were very opaque about it. Isn't that sad? I wish they were more upfront about what you're getting out of it. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's sad. I've only had one of the highlight, uh, one of the Brook Lottie Black Arts, which is the four point one. It is by far my favorite whiskey ever. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think I've ever had a Scotch as good as that one. And the sheer amount of complexity and nuance. This was the last one done by Jim McEwen before he left. I mean, I don't know if that. Oh, matters. it does matter. Let me tell you why. And it's yeah. like, go ahead. Um, but I was thinking about that one. So I'm thinking about whiskeys that I paid over 300 for, which I can, again, I can count on one hand. Lafroy 25, Brook Lottie Black Art 4.1, Glen Goyne 25, and this Highland Brook 21. And I'll tell you, if you gave me 325 bucks and chose me to, told me I could choose one of the four, I'd take the Brook Lottie Black Art 4.1 any day of the week. Wow. Um, okay. The, it's just the sheer amount of complexity, like it, it's hard to explain. I, the thing that you notice in older whiskeys is some of these tropical notes, which I did get on this Highland Park 21. I definitely get on the Brook Lottie. I get on the Lafroy. Um, Highland Park 25, I, definitely. Highland Park 25. I've and never it. had the Highland Park 25. And eight, eight, 18 to an extent, the old version has that tropical kind of feel a little bit to it. but Yeah. I just think that, like, the thing about the Bruglotti stuff, and again, I, I can only speak for the 4.1, but I can only imagine that the additional um, uh, Black Arts are, are probably close to as good. It's just the sheer amount of like craftsmanship and complexity that are in those. It's unmatched, in my opinion, of anything I've had. And again, it's limited, but... You're lucky enough to have the 4.1. I've I was also lucky enough to have I the 4.1. Agree. Oh wow, man! I'll be sitting on them for a while. You're extremely lucky because not only will those sell for five hundred dollars a piece right now, those mm -hmm. are the last of the good of that series. I had the 5.1. Oh, you did. I had the five and the six. I've, I've had them at tastings, and the four to me is the best because it has. 
and you're thinking I'm gonna think I'm crazy, but there's like a mushroom gravy truffle note in that four. You cannot get it from the five or the six or anything after. Oh, and I'm not sure why, but the, there's a really nice savoriness to that four. I can't. I get the tropical fruit. I get everything else in the five and the six and, and thereafter. But that that savory mushroom esque truffley note that I adored that I first had on that four, man. I can't get it anywhere else. Interesting. Yeah, I've never had the, the good fortune to try the five or the six. And I guess there's now a seven. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I the 4.1 was revelatory. I, 40, I, 40 thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember, I, I mean, I did a, a whiskey, you know, my, my review last year, my, my top five whiskeys of the year, I had to split it in two because I wanted the four, because I had had the 4.1 and I was like, this is the best whiskey I've ever had. But I also recognized that I got lucky and had got it at like $310. Oh and yeah. That's a huge price. So I split it. My sub $100 was the Glen Scotia 15. My upwards was the Blicklotti Blackheart. And yeah, I had to make the exception because it was just so good. There was three whiskeys that, I, that are the best I've ever had. And the, the Brook Lottie Black Arts 4.1 is my top three. The other two was the McAllen Fine Oak 21. It's unreal. Only only reason I had it, because uh, Mr. Lee was gracious enough to bring it to the DC Expo. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And the best whiskey I've ever tasted was the Ardbeg 23-year-old. Uh, that was that 20-something. Oh, my God, man. It was a 23-year-old version of it. He brought that as well. And all three were kick-ass, but I think the Ardbeg 20-something was my favorite. My second favorite was the Brook uh 23 Black Arts 4.1. And my third favorite was the McKellen uh, uh, 21 Fine Oak. Those are the best three I have ever tasted, bar none, period, no questions asked. I don't usually get into independent bottles, so I'm not really taking that into account. But uh, there yeah. You. yeah, I mean, I'm with you, like – I have not had. I mean, the only ones of those I've had is the the Brook Body 4.1, which would be number one for me. Followed closely behind, probably by Ball Blair, uh, probably by Lafroy Gate, yeah, Lafroy Gate 18 and Ball Blair 1990 second release, 25 year old. What about the 25 or the 30 you had on the Lafroy? Uh, you know what? I would take the Lafroy 18 over the 25. I have a Lafroy 28, which I haven't opened yet. But oh wow! I, I want to be there for that opening. Damn it! <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about that one? The 28? No, I don't think so. So let me tell you a quick story, and this might be a fun one to talk about. Is about like the best uh, whiskey whiskey deals you've ever got in your life. Oh god! So, I bet um, I can top that one. <laughs> I don't think you're going to be able to top this. But if you, you might can, be surprised, you might be surprised. Be so, my brother is a uh, a big bourbon fan, not a big Scotch drinker at all, and so he periodically would send me pictures of Scotch whiskeys that he finds uh, on shelves, and I, you know, and said, "Would you want this?" And I'd be like, "Oh hell yeah!" And I'm like, "What's the price?" And it's like, you know, probably four billion dollars more expensive <laughs> than I can get it for. I mean, even things like you know hundreds. Whiskeys that should be a hundred that are like one forty. So I'm like, after a while, I got used to it. I was like, yeah, whatever. So he sends me a picture one day of a Lafroy 28, and I was like, he's like, dude, what do you think of this bottle? And I'm like, oh my god, I would love that bottle. Ha ha ha. How much is this one? And he goes, uh, one hundred ninety nine dollars. Ooh, said, that is really good. <laughs> and I said, come again. And he said, yeah, uh, Lafroy 28, one hundred ninety nine dollars. And I said, uh, buy every. Come again. <laughs> come again. <laughs> Yeah, I you think he said, Do you have any Q-tips? <laughs> no, he said he said 199 bucks, and I said buy every bottle he has. Oh my goodness! And like he's got one, and I said, well, buy it. Yeah. <laughs> and this was a guy who runs a liquor store. He is he's no fool. He he's he sells bottles at regular prices, but for some godforsaken reason, this guy had priced a Lafroy 28. Which is an eight hundred dollar bottle, seven eight hundred dollar bottle at two hundred bucks, 
Uh, I got it. It's sitting right behind me. I haven't opened it yet. I'm saving it for a special case. Oh, my God. This is, it's like, where's the Star Trek replicator at this point? <laughs> I was like, dude, if he has more, I'll buy every bottle. I, I will max my credit card out on this. Oh, I my God, it. man. And so I ended up getting a bottle of Lafroy 28 for 200 bucks. The best deal yeah. I've ever got. That you, you might you might actually have me beat maybe, but it might be close because I was I told you about the story where I w- walked into the Cheers Wines and Spirits and the guy was like you know I was looking around they didn't really have anything and I was like yeah I'm looking for an Ardbeg or Lafroig or something like that and he's like well I've got some bottles at home you might be interested and he had the Supernova Stella release 2009 he had the Ardbeg Blazda and he had a 2008 bottle of Ugadal. All three for two hundred dollars. <laughs> what? And I was like, okay, this. I even told him, I'm like, dude, I don't want to. I don't want. I want to be a, an asshole. The, the the stellar release for the Supernova is from two thousand nine. That has got to be worth at least five, six, seven hundred dollars by itself. Okay, that's a better deal. Not even, not even thinking about the blast. The blast is worth. I mean, even though it's a low ABV and it's not, it's one of the rare non peat well, very low peated art bags. It's still worth, you know, two, three hundred bucks. And the sold you all three of those bottles for two hundred bucks. And the two thousand eight Ugadol, that alone is worth two, three hundred dollars. I would think, you know. So I was like sold, and, and he's like, he's like, no, I appreciate you, you being honest with me, but I knew that you would like it, and I don't want to sell it to anybody else that's not going to appreciate it. I'm like, I'm the most appreciative Whoa. guy in the world. <laughs> okay. So I was like sold. <laughs> Next day, I'm like, I'll be here tomorrow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. It pays to go inside and talk this talk shop with the whiskey people because always, you can always. make some crazy ass deals. And I drink, I drank almost. I have a little bit of supernova left. I mean, I'm getting toward the end. I'm drinking that shit though. I got, a, I got a lot of Blasda left. It's okay. It's not yeah, my favorite. I heard the Blasda is whatever, but dude, you got three of those bottles for two hundred dollars. But, but the Blasda is really good if you're in the mood for something different and still want to keep it art bag. It's like, it's like unlike any art bag you've ever tasted. I'll try to save you, uh, save you a, a, a skosh at the end and oh. see what you think of it. Too kind. Um, you're too kind, sir. No, no, no. I'll, I'll try to save you a little of the supernova if I can. Unbelievable, <laughs> man. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, the, the first release of the supernova, 2009. You all three of those bottles for 200 bucks? <laughs> That's why I thought, well, you might have a really good deal, but I might have you beat Pops. Yeah, you got me beat. You got me beat. <laughs> but it's barely, man. You got a, you got a 25-year-old Lafroy for a couple hundred bucks. If you dollars you would have got a deal. That's still nine hundred dollars bottle you got for two hundred. Oh, That's crazy. Yeah, but if he would have said, "I'll sell you these three bottles for five hundred, that would have been a deal. I would that would have been no questions asked. I still would have been like, "Well, where are we going to come up with this money? I'm going to talk to the old wife about yeah. this." One. <laughs> Thankfully, Don't tell they her. Come to that. Yeah. <laughs> Secret credit card for that one. Let's wow. catch up on a couple of comments here. Glenn going chapter one NAS first full sherry at forty eight percent. That sounds. Even though it's an NAS, that still sounds beautiful. I haven't had any of those, but I and I didn't know if to whether or not I should get them. But this sounds like a that sounds like a fantastic deal. I didn't know it was first fill. Have you bought it, Lost Cause, and did you like it? Is my question. Legacy Chapter One. Okay, it's only, only ten was meh. Yeah, I can imagine it, at that age the the mouth fill mm-hmm. you would think would be really really ultra thin, wouldn't it? Or have you Juan, had? Do you think it was like I don't know, Juan? If you've had the the 12 but how it would compare to the 12 that's a good question because you got to compare with the with the distilleries other stuff yeah he'd also vote gregeliki 23 yeah. so that's um, uh, oh interesting okay yeah man i mean you have almost the entire core range there trooper that's awesome that is awesome you don't see that every day either it's hard it's not easy to funk when going all the time no it is not the Altmore 21 has made deals before, but never seen the Clegalic 23 for 229 either. Yeah, I would. I think that's a really good price for the 23 because the 17 was not too far away from that price from what I remember. I mean, it wasn't quite that high. It was like 170. I'm thinking for the. I can't remember what I paid for the for the 17, but it was uh, it was underneath 230. But I would I would still go that way. Yeah. Golden Dream on Netflix where McKellen describes Black Art. Oh, okay. I didn't know about that. 
Man, I'll tell you, man, that oh, that four point one is something else. What what is? Do you know what this Golden Dream is? Is it a movie or what is it? So I, I first when he wrote that, I thought he was talking about um, there is a Scotch distillery or a Scotch documentary on Amazon, and I want to. Oh God, I wish I could remember the name. But it has it. Jim McEwen's all over it, and he talks about you know his time at Brooklady and all that. Um, but it's not called the Golden Dream. I got to see this for sure. Thank you for oh. thank you, Lost Cause. I'm going to check that out for sure. Well, let me know what which one you're talking about, Malt, because I've got both Netflix and uh, the uh, the Amazon one, so I could probably watch you know both of them. I want to think it's. I I, I want to say it's called Neat. Okay. Okay. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, so Neat on Amazon, possibly, and the Golden Dream on Netflix. I'll have to remember that because I got to watch that. I think it's called Neat. Let me just double check. No, Neat is the story of bourbon. The Scotch one is called. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll know in a second. You can uh, you can continue. I'll let you know what it is. Sure. Let's talk about Ardenaho. This guy is saying. Speaking of uh, him, McEwen, I cannot wait to try some Ardenaho. Is he the head guy Ardenaho now? Yeah, he's that guy. Oh, yeah. dude, you're in for a treat. And let me tell you why. I had a buddy who recently went to Ardenaho and got to taste their new make. And let me tell you what he said about the new make of Ardenaho, really? which is the new Isla distillery that people are, are just dying for. Um, this is what he says. Let me uh, get past all the, the, you know, the upfront stuff. Um, so Stephen Connors, right? It is the, the one I was thinking of is the one that was mentioned, the, the golden dream. Yeah. That's the one with that. It's on Amazon prime video. It is. It's Jim McEwen's all over it. Check it out. It's great. Yeah, it says one thing I love about Dramfest is that you often get to chat with to the distillers and sometimes even have a new make. What I like about Hunter Ling is that they, they do their bottlings. When uh, I heard that they had opened an Isla distillery, I was very interested in trying some of the new distillate. It's a family-owned distillery, which is rare, and first opened on Isla since 2005 with Kilhoman, which is the last one. Every aspect of the new setup they've got is top-notch. It has Oregon pine fermenters, two lantern-shaped pot stills, a 13,000-liter wash still, an 11,000-liter spirit still, the longest Lynn arm in Scotland, apparently in a rum, uh, a worm tub condenser. Uh, the distill is made from malted peat between 40 and 45 ppm from Port Ellen maltings and undergoes a slow fermentation around 72 hours. Jim McEwen, uh, Jim McEwen, I'm probably butchering his name, came out of retirement, consulted on the project, and joked that finding the cut point in the spirit was as difficult as giving birth. I'm also quite excited that they, I'm also quite excited they've got a lot of different caskings. The diversity reminded me of Ben Ryak, primarily they have 70% first fill of bourbon barrels, 20 to 25% first fill ex oloroso hogsheads, and some butts. However, they also have some other wine casts such as Port Madeira, Muscat, Rojoa, and some rum. They do the Kill Devil range as well. So I'm looking forward to hopefully some great wine and port cask finishing from them. Anyhow, the, the new make was awesome. Very biscuity, fruity, and smoky. Very much hope that they have good casks to do it justice. Wow. And that's where he left off. And, and for him to give it a 4.5 out of 5 on a new make, that is something special. So I think we're yeah, going to be. Sounds delicious. I think we're uh, when Ardenaho is really like, you know. I can't wait for that, man. Yeah, that that's one of the things I'm looking forward to the most. Speaking of uh, 4.5 out of 5 drams, I don't know where you fell on this one, but I'm. Uh, how, what was your opinion on the Lefroig lore? I do like the Lefroig lore a lot. Um, do I wish it had an H statement? Yes, but is it disappointing? No. After having the 18 and the 15, it kind of is like if you took the 15 and the 18 and made some sort of blend. It, it, it's it's a lot like it, uh, thinking of it that way. That's a good way to put it. The thing that I noticed about the lore, I mean, this is my third bottle of lore. I never, I didn't get one of them when it first came out. And I've noticed that the prices went down in most places. Thank God. So you, can find, 30, man. Yeah, you can find more for like 85, 90 bucks now. The thing I like about the lore is like, it's one of the, whis it, this is one of the few whiskeys that I can say this about. And I don't know if it makes it a good or a bad thing. You can notice the like shifts in flavor profile 
almost to a T. It's like you sip it and it goes like in stages. It's like one, two, three. Like it goes from like being sweet and fruity to uh, smoky peaty to like caramely bourbon. Like it, I'm not saying it goes in that exact order, but I'm saying like you can notice the stages of it in a way I've never noticed with any other whiskey. I, d- I don't think it's like their best whiskey. I think I put it as I did a top five Lafroig videos uh, or top five Lafroigs. I don't know. A while back. I think Laura was like number five on my list because I do really enjoy it. But yeah, it has this quality where you just like you take a sip and you're like, mm, and then it like you just notice it shift over to like something different and then something different. It, it, it It's almost like to some would argue to a fault, like designed <laughs> yeah. like like very designed whiskey um and in an amazing was. way though which i like tip my hat to but i i really do enjoy it i think it was designed and and, and that's i think that's why some of these guys do nas is is for their way to do experimentation because if you mm-hmm. take any of your really old stuff and they do have some 30 year old shit in that lore believe it or not there is some very old whiskey in there for them to take that but put it with some younger stuff to give it that peak it's it's that's when they get screwed because they can't put that 15 18 30 year old mark on it they have to mark it with the lowest and if they use some seven year old stuff in there to give it that 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 oomph that's where you get screwed on the age statements that's that's hopefully there's a way maybe they can change the law or augment it somehow where you Maybe you can put an age statement as long as you put the lowest and the highest. That should, you know. Oh, interesting! Like, like do a range. Yeah, why not? Because that would tell us they they would be able to be upfront with what they're putting in there, and they would be happy because they would be able to put that. You know, we not only do we have seven year old shit in there, we've got some 15, 18, 30 year old stuff in there as well. You know what I mean? I heard that in the first batches of lore that were released, they had put some significantly higher age stuff. I, I don't know if that's the case now because I've never had an early lore, so I can't compare it. And, and I know lore is a relatively divisive whiskey, and you know, people got opinions about Lafroy. I, you know, I generally, Lafroy was one of the first major distilleries I got into and I still feel like I love them in a lot of ways, um, especially their carcass. My top five Lafroy's, and I, I'll be actually curious if you agree with me on this. Uh, the top five Lafroy's in the video I did, and I've had probably about 15 different Lafroy's. Number five was the Lore. Number four was the Carcass 2017 quarter cask at cast strength. Number three was the 25. Number two was the 18. Number one was the 10 cast strength. Oh, wow. That's not a bad deal because, I mean, the 10 cast strength, even though it's not a higher age, it is their bread and butter. It's like their... And there's a new one out. Uh, it hasn't hit the States yet as far as I've seen, but the new... The new 10 cast strength is out. Uh, the batch 12, which is uh, uh, February release. Uh, my, my favorite, favorite, oh man, it's going to be tough. My, my number one is probably the 18, only because I have had the older ones. I just like the peat still being a part of it. Like the 18 has that, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the reason why I like that one a lot. I think my second favorite is the Anquamore. Have you ever had, had the Anquamore? Oh, that's a travel exclusive, right? Yeah. yeah. It's it's not easy to find, but I tell you what, it's very worth the pickup, I think. I'd be surprised if you didn't like it. It's got a nice ABV. I have to look it up, but I think it's at least 46 or 48%. And uh, it's definitely nothing like a Four Oak. <laughs> that should tell you a lot right there. Oh, um, my God. The Four Oak. Yeah. The Four Oak was so disappointing. My third is, oh, well, I, I, I'm not counting the carriages. If I took the carriages in there, my first would be the Portwood 13. That one is good. Yeah, crazy. the Portwood 13 was really good. The Broad Deer is another port cast that's really good. Any batch, batch one, batch two, the Broad Deers are really good port whiskeys that the Lafroigs had in the, in the past. Uh, but if we're just talking like regular, I'd say the 18, the Anquamore, um, the Lore. The, 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 I'd, I will put the, the cast strength 10 up there as well. 
And maybe the, even the PX cask. I know a lot of people don't like it. Oh, no, 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 no. interesting. Wow, we really we really diverge on the the price. Yeah, I mean, I, I do appreciate. Like, I know you love the 2015 carriages a lot, and the um... oh, the 2015 carriages. That 200th anniversary was amazing. The one I love the most, honestly, is the 2017 quarter cast cast drink because it's it's the most intense Lafroy I think I've ever had. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a good point. Like, if you see, to me, like. I appreciate Lafroy and Lagavulin for that matter. When they take the heavy peep, they also put either a heavy sherry or a heavy cask maturation with it. That's when I get like, okay. I mean, I do appreciate it when they go balls to the wall and do like a crazy quarter cask or the, the triple wood cast strength was yeah. really well, good. The wood has sherry. What did you think of that triple wood carches, triple wood cast strength carches from last year, which had, I mean, because the triple wood has some sherry in it, but did you? Were you blown away by that triple wood carches? Special? Compared to the basic triple wood, yes. To compare to other carches, it wasn't the better ones for me, but it wasn't better. It wasn't better than the Fino. I like the no, Fino probably the Fino better. better. Yeah, I agree. Amontillado, I definitely liked a lot better. The Amontillado yeah. was awesome. Uh, sure. even, yeah, I know you don't like the Madeira that much, but even the Madeira I thought was pretty good. You know. Yeah, the Madeira was one of my least favorites, and that's one that I would probably want to try again. That was what 2016. Yeah, um, I, even had, I even bought two bottles. That's why I mean I liked it that much. And I I usually don't. I mean I did the two bottles for the Fino. I did two bottles yeah, of Madeira. Yeah. I, w I would have gotten two of the 14 and the 13 if I could, you know, find them and afford them. But yeah, was, yeah. Yeah, the 13, <laughs> those are nearly impossible to get now. Isn't that I sad? Had the 13 Portwood from uh, the Evolved, and it was fantastic. But same here, man. He's very gracious. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And I hope he's doing well. Shout out to him. I know he's recovering from the COVID. Cheers. If you're watching. Um, mm hmm. The Fino I really liked, and the one this year, which I know is out in Britain, and you can get it for 120 pounds if you want to overpay for it, is the it's port and red wine. That's isn't, the it, one. isn't it funny that everyone's getting on the red wine, like the, the Pinot yeah, Noir? Yeah, right. so, soon enough, it's going to be like tequila or rum. <laughs> you know, well, the rum finish has already happened a bit. It'll be yeah. tequila or something like that, you know. I mean, they're going to run out of stuff sooner or later, you know, which is why I think, like, for Art Bag with their committee releases, they need to just do, like, a, like a 15-year-old Ugadol, you know? <laughs> like a, uh, where, where do I sign? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. 200 bucks? Here, take it. Looks uh, like uh, uh, a uh, uh, 15-year Corey Vrecken, you know? Looks like Stephen was saying that you would like even the Black Arts 3.1. might not be as good as the 4.1, but it's still very good. Oh, I never had any of the earlier ones. I, I'm I looking for all the time, but I would love to try any of them. Me too. If if a, a Stephen, if you still have an open an opened or open bottle of the three point one and prior, give us a holler. <laughs> we, 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 we 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 we're ready to sign wherever you want us to sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard the Black Star's really best bottles of each year they offer. Yeah. Yeah, Brooke Lottie, the Black Arts are pretty much the, the, the best of what they have to offer. Even I even like the Black Arts better than the Octomore. Even being a P-head, I still like the Black Arts better. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah, uh, over like the – well, that brings up a good question. What do you think of the whole uh, – what's that heavily, you know, five, you know, uh, 300 ppm range they have? Uh, Octomore. Octomore. Do you, are, you, are you impressed by that stuff? I am if if with some of the bottlings like the if when when you get the the five point one the six point one the seven point one eight point one etc those are are pretty much like their virgin oak basic peat up in your face bottlings and they're good are they worth two twenty five two thirty uh, I'm not quite sure about that. Once you get to like the point twos that's my favorite of the series and that's when they get into the 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 influence of the cask like a french syrah or some sort of um you know wine cask of some sort that's my favorite now that i do think is is up there with the black arts kind of bottles the yeah. point threes are kind of like when they're really getting experimental and 
the seven point three I thought was horrible. Well, interesting. Is there a logic to the point numbers on that? Like point yeah. one, point two, point three. What's, yeah. the, what's the logic? Anytime that that they do a release, the point ones are always going to be pretty much virgin oak, ver like basic, heavily. So those are going to be the real sooty, spicy ones. One sixty nine to two hundred up to three hundred ppm, like like the heavy yeah. ppm. The 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 point twos are still heavy ppm, but they introduce like a cask maturation or some sort of like influence uh, uh, with it. And those are like the best, I think. And then the point three is almost like an experiment where they're like, okay, how can we really make this interesting? And that's when it tastes like durian fruit and some crazy ass shit you don't want to taste. And that's when I'm like, no, no, thank you. Got so, it. Okay. That's, 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 that's to me. I've never, I've never bought them strictly because uh, because of two things, I went. I was on a live stream. Uh, I'm part of this group called the Philadelphia Whiskey Society, and the guy who runs it had a Diageo rep on, who basically was saying, like, again, Brugalotti's not part of Diageo, but was basically saying, like, you know, at, uh, the human palate can really only taste up to like upwards of like 25 to 30 ppm. He's and not right. Not, it's all kind of like whatever he's, he's not right though in that you can definitely taste a huge difference between the 169 the 220 and up versus like the relatively point. though like relatively to all oh, big time you, you, you I, had, I had i uh the evolved had sent me i want to say it was the 7.1 octomore and like yeah i mean i remember it being like really peaty but in terms of like I guess I'll put it this way. In terms of the intensity, right. the intensity of the whiskey, I still felt like Lafroy quarter cast, cast strength, or Corey Vrecken were more intense. It was it was peatier in the sense of it was like more effervescent and drier, but like I wouldn't say that it was like what what would that be like thirteen times more intense in any in any significant way? That's the thing with Pete. It's not going to give you more smoke per se. It's not going to give you any right, more right, complexity right. per se. But it's going to it is going to give you more effervescence. And you're, that's the perfect word to use for it. It's bright and sprightly. It definitely you you can definitely taste that. But that's really all the PPM is going to give you. I wish he gave you the seven point two. The seven point two is my favorite Octomore I've ever had, and that's the French Syrah cask. Holy shit, is that one? That's one of the best whiskeys, man. It's really good. So I, French Syrah. Isn't there like a Glenn Livet that just or Glenn Livet or Glenn Fittick that just came out with that? It sounds familiar. I think someone else recently did like yeah. do that. So it'd be worth definitely worth a shot to try. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean you might be right. And like I said, I've just not had enough of the Octomore range. I've been gun shy just because like I feel like two hundred and fifty bucks the price is too high. Yeah. I the whiskey. I'm like eh. But I do hear, you know, a lot of the people who I, whose opinions I, you know, listen to and guys I watch on YouTube, you know, are like, oh, yeah, Octomore is awesome. So it's, it's. I would do the tastings, like get, get your buddies to send you something if they have. If I had any Octomore here, I would send it to you myself. I don't, but if you don't even. Look at that shampoo bottle presentation of those, too, by the way. <laughs> I don't know. Some people like it, but I always was like, it looked weird to me. The, the, the bottles of the yeah, Octomore? Yeah, they look like shampoo bottles. <laughs> they, they do. They're really basic. There's not a lot of frills going. Well, I'm not. Here. I mean, whatever. Who cares, right? The, the, the only well, the juice and you, you do want it to kind of. You would think they would make it stand out on the shelf, so you would be kind of drawn to it. But no, they're not. Brook Lottie's never. I mean, the black art bottles are cool, but other than that, they don't really do a whole the lot. Black art bottles are really cool. Well, I mean, I don't know, like the classic Lottie and stuff with that, like turquoise blue. I don't know. I thought those were kind of cool. That is true. They they, they, they do. It, it, it's it's funny. That I guess what I should say is their Octomore bottles are very subtle compared to the prices that you're paying for. You know what I mean? Agree. Yeah, totally agree. I totally agree with that. But, some of them are like the, the – and, you know, I guess I'll say this. You know, some of the Octomores are like the, the black bottles. Some of them are like translucent. You know, presentation isn't – something that makes or breaks a whiskey for me because i think once you get to a range where you have a, a little bit of a sense and know your way around scotch whiskey you're not necessarily uh captivated by presentation that said uh you know sometimes presentation looks pretty good and uh and you're a little bit more intrigued by it 
I do want to try the new 10 year old stuff. I know Octomore has released some of their 10 year old stuff. I haven't tried well, it. I didn't know there was Octomore 10. I know there's the Port Charlotte 10, which is great. They do have an Octomore series that's finally got to the 10 year range. So I'm definitely intrigued on in trying it. But like you, I'm not willing to spend 250 on a bottle that I have no idea about. So right. I'll definitely be looking for samples. And I mean, I know I've been knocking the Expos to an extent. Sometimes Expos make sense if you're going for something that isn't like 20 something years old and people don't know, really know a lot about it that is when expos are handy and you could probably get your hands under some really good octomores at some expo so it might be worth a you know a trip yeah. if if you know brooke lottie is going to be there looks like you might be stingy but i think you have to be in this distillery to spend more than 150 on bottles age doesn't mean whiskey is always better that's true it means it's more rare that's true yeah i i agree with that i think yeah i think you're on point with that um i'm way behind in the comments but check if oh, you yeah, guys catch up if you guys have uh if you guys yeah, have yeah. uh <laughs> sorry if you guys have uh had the any of the new octomore bottlings let us know what you think i'm just curious yeah px class is really nice but it's travel retail but you can still get it if you know what you're doing online you can order it really easily it's i actually got to try that i they had it at, I went to a really, really cool whiskey bar called the Black Rock, I think, in London last year. Oh, wow. And they had they had the uh, the Lafroy PX cast there, and so I got to try it. it. It was quite good. Even, you know, it is NAS, but it's 48%, you know. Um, and, and honestly, there's nothing else that Lafroy puts out that has PX in it at all. So it was a cool, it was a cool pour. I've always looked for it in travel retail, but I was never able to find it. He loved the car just triple wood. So the only one he's had, but the lore is one very near horizon. You'll love the lore and the QC, man. The quarter cast and the lore are really, really good. Oh, yeah. and, I mean, the, the, the car just triple wood is good. It's just very wood heavy. I mean, that's the thing about triple wood. You're getting a lot of wood, so you better yeah, like it. I felt like it was a little muddled. Like, it, yeah. it didn't quite... It didn't quite pop like the quarter cast cast strength did, but again, like it's mild. I get some mild criticism. I still think it was a good bottle. I think if your choice was the Lafroy quarter cast, uh, triple wood cast strength or the lore, I get the lore. I'm surprised that he's seeing the lore for that much still because other than California, I haven't seen the lore for that high a price. Because when I first started looking, <gasps> Excuse me. Here they were like one fifteen, one twenty, one thirty. But Dude, I bought three bottles of lore last year for eighty apiece. Thankfully, it has dropped here in Maryland, even. Even, but like in California, they still want to charge you like one thirty. It's crazy. Perfect. But he saw the new car just for a hundred dollars. I would, I would pick it up for that. Crazy, yeah. There's no way I'd pay that much. But the new car just for a hundred dollars. That's that's perfect. I would, I would grab it for yeah. that. Agreed. Yeah, I'd do it. Where, where would you get the uh, the new carriages for a hundred, Daniel? I'm just curious because I need to pick a new one up. Uh, the four rankings are good. I would only disagree with the carriages. I think the 2019 triple weight carriages is better than the carriages quarter cast. The 10 is the best quality and value. Yeah, I'm with yeah, you there, Andrew. Andrew Page. I totally agree, and that's why uh, the quarter cast cast drink was my number one because I think for the price and the diversity of what you get every year, you can't go wrong with it. I think it's the best peated whiskey. If there's one peated scotch, I would recommend to anybody who's had scotch before. It would be the quarter. Uh, it would be the uh, Lafroy Ten Triple uh, Lafroy uh, Ten Casting. He's saying if we like the the Black Arts, we should track down at least a sample of the OBA Concept. I have heard of this. I've never tried any of the uh, Concept bottles. They're very particular. I have seen them for sale for like two twenty. Is, yeah. is two twenty a good price on that, Stephen? I'm just curious if that's crazy or if that's a, a fair price on the uh, OBA. Uh, it's literally a Black Arts Octomore. That sounds damn oh, good. Jeez, that sounds like heaven on earth. It does. Could you imagine the peat level with the complexity oh, of a Black Arts bottle? I can't. Holy shit, we got to get that. <laughs> yeah, we got to get that. All right, man. With that, I got to. Uh, get ready to sign off here but i hear you i'm about the two hour mark but uh it's been fun man and uh let's connect over email and see what's up for next week and yeah. good good chatting with everybody as usual i'll raise my what's left of my lore here and uh i'll catch you next week brother stay well
I've got yeah. a I've got a surprise space side peated bottle to show you for next week. You'll be Ooh. like, what? <laughs> yeah, and this is a distillery bottle. I'm interested. Alta Vanya. It's oh, spelled, no. okay. it's spelled weird, but it's Alta Vanya. It's A L L T. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, maybe I'll yeah, sure find it. I'll I'll take a look. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, not expensive you, either. Good chatting, brother. I'll see you, Good man. Start, everybody, be well. It's like uh, thanks a lot, uh, Malt, for stopping by as well. Um, look at the the comments here. Sorry, uh, but yeah, the Altavania is what we're going to look at. I think next week for something a little different, and that's a distillery bottle, which is rare. Not a not a bad price at like forty bucks too. Uh, very nice. It was a three dram bottle kill. Oh man, five Isla lineup. Our big ten. Lagavulin sixteen. Porta Sega hundred proof. Ooh, and the Yugadal making um, solid memories. I can imagine, man. That's that's quite a lineup, I have to say. First time having our big ten. And the second dram was the, the triple wood. That's a, that's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's this sound like a night to remember there. Oh, it's Ottomore Black Arts. I d didn't know that. I was wondering what the OBA was. Well, hell, I'm learning this shit right now. <laughs> I just lost where I was in the comments. Damn it. Let's see. Oh, there we go. How long have you been in the whiskey? I think you said it's been so long. That's cool. Let me uh, catch up here. Sorry. Lost Cause loves the Octomore. I do. I need to try more Octomores too. Yeah, some of them are hit and miss. You got to be careful with the cask influence, though. That 7.3 was very, very, very insane. I just, I actually sold it to Lee. It was, it was that crazy, and he loved it, but not, not for me. Um, seven year Sauternes. That sounds awesome. Octomore independent bottlings. I had a rest and be thankful seven year Sauternes. I didn't know Octomore, uh, Brook Lottie basically does Octomore. I didn't know they had any independent bottlings of Octomore. Is that true? Let me know, Last Cost, if that's true. I didn't know that. I got to look that up. They have Octomore independent bottles? I was the same way. I was like, what? Sure do. Rare to be sure. I got to look into that. That's strange. The lore is still higher in Hawaii. Oh, one is in Hawaii. Damn, 120 to 130. That is crazy. Well, the good news one is that the prices, and I'm going to pour me some more here. The prices should be coming down, I would think. I don't see why it would be so damn high for, for much longer. Because they have settled. It was that high here in Maryland about three years ago, I want to say, when it uh, was 120 to 130, but thankfully it's gone down. So hopefully within very soon, I'm hoping for you that they uh, come down. Local stop shop in Longview, Texas. Is that a gas station? What? <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'd have to see it to believe it. <laughs> uh, what's the most you spent on lore? Oh, shoot. I would say for me, when it started, I think they released it at 130, 129.99 was the retail. Thankfully, like a lot of these guys have said, in the mainland states, it's gone down to about 80 to 90. But um, not sure. Where are you from? Uh, and I want to say it's a lot. I might be butchering your pronunciation. I apologize uh, a lot, but uh, let me know if uh, how you pronounce it. Give me the phonetics. Do I need to get it at hundred dollars? If it's lore, hell yeah, I would say so. It's definitely twenty bucks off. Put it that way, from what it used to be. Lucas has been scotch for over a decade. Only, wow, Columbus Select Reserve, the Ugadal sixteen and the and, uh, log, log of the sixteen and the Ugadal, but twenty bottles. Yeah, that's a good set to start with. Definitely try some independent bottles of that. Yeah. Take care of the malt. It's launch of all there. The OBA is fantastic, but the price is secondary and auction only north of 500 Oh, no. I think I know a place that has this, possibly. I got to check and see if he still has it. Because it's not $500. And 
I don't think it's a 500 milliliter bottle. I think it's 750. Maybe it's maybe it is smaller. I never opened the can. The can's big. I thought it was a 750 milliliter bottle, but maybe not. I'll have to look and see on that one. Yeah, you guys. A lot of you guys are positive on that. Hey, Whiskey Ace, good to see you, man. Late joiner, but we'll take you anytime. To be, for, to, uh, to be fair, the price to come down here in Shreveport, Louisiana, on the Lord, it, went, it was 150 That is way too high for... That's just way too high. Hey, Swami, good to see you. I am Lord. <laughs> that is scary. I'm not quite... I'm not sure how to take that uh, avatar icon, whatever that you want to call that. I see a toilet bowl and a man about to lose his his stuff. <laughs> but it looks like he's got he's like a skeleton on his body, but his head is is there. Maybe he's just got a striped shirt on or something. I'm trying to make that out. That's a tough one. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate his the passion with the hereditary connection. Great grandfather came to Canada from Scotland 110 years ago. Wow. Yeah, family here is from Scotland as well. It's funny, we're from uh, Annadale, which is uh, in the Lowlands. I think he, technically um, on the border, but all the Johnstons came from uh, Annadale that are from Scotland. They went from Scotland to Ireland to America in uh, Pennsylvania. It was the first place I believe they settled in Somerset County, of all places. I've been blending the Lafroy 10 with the Abana 50 50 and making my own lore. That's interesting. That's not a bad that's not a bad idea, actually. Does the TCP iodine, you know, hospital bandage thing go well with the Abana? I mean Theoretically, it would make sense because you're going with a straight sherry, high proof, with a medium proof, uh, 10-year-old peated scotch. I would think it would work. What do you think, Juan? Do you like it? Are you are you in love with it? Or are you kind of like, eh, it's, it's okay? What's, if you gave it a, a rated star, like 3 out of 5 stars, 3.5, 3.25 out of 5, what would you get it, give it? Uh, as a blend, I'm, I'm curious because it's usually pretty easy to get an Abana. Um, the batch, you know, might be tough if you're going for like an old, like 53 or 60 something batch uh, series. But uh, those are the best, by the way. The 58, the the lower 50, higher 60 level, I thought was pretty good. A lot of cloves, a lot of really good stuff there, but. Lafroy 10 with that, man. I got to try that sometime. It was 100 for the triple wood care, just not the lore. Oh, yeah, 100 bucks for the triple wood care, just as a steal. It should be like 120 to 130, actually. That's what they were selling it, I think, for around uh, most places. Um, yeah, 120 to 130 at the, at the, at the minimal level for the uh, care, just because it's cast strength. I mean, the Lord's cheaper than mommy's just mommy. Oh no. Here we go. <laughs> oh man, don't be one of those guys. Come on. <laughs> Howdy, Swami. OM Swamis. I'm not even gonna go there. Yeah, I know the city next to New Orleans there. I'm not gonna try to pronounce it, I'm gonna butcher it. I barely speak any French. Obi was sold originally only through the distillery. Only 3,000 bottles. I think I do know a place that has this, believe it or not. I gotta, I gotta try that. Yeah, it does look like a shutshell break. <laughs> Super freaking good. That blend is awesome. Okay. I'm gonna have to try that one. You give me a good idea. I, 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 I a while back, I had a spreadsheet made, and I thought I was going to get people to try to do some interesting blends and keep track of them, but it never really took off. There was a few people that tried a couple blends, but there wasn't a lot of action on it, so I didn't really make a lot more of it. But I'll have to, uh, you know, give it a give it a try there. Sorry, I got to get situated here. I'm three at point five out of five. It's not shabby. It's above average. It's uh. Worth a try, I definitely would say. 
64 awesome awesome choice man i've had that batch believe it or not that's the one that has the clove finish it's got the really great sherry presence it does have a bit of tannins it's a it's it's high abv but sipping and the christmas cake fruit cake notes and all that i remember and just the the really nice clove cigarette finish on the end i like that one a lot characters for 80 80 canadian dollars are we talking american dollars there whiskey ace uh, let's be specific because for you to get a characters for 80 that's pretty that's pretty damn good usually they're 100 bucks i'd say uh most of them <laughs> guys you must have uh have been a better selection down there. Yep. Definitely. Me what? <laughs> yeah, me too. I got to go find it if they have it. Maturi. Maturi. Sorry. Maturi. See, I, I told you I was going to butcher it, butcher it. Yeah, stay classy. <laughs> I get random stuff locally really cheap. A lot of the very high end I get online. Lucky man, the fruit tin is good for blending. That's true. And welcome, uh, the pickled hound. I don't know if I've seen you before. Cheers. Hopefully, you're having something good. Have you ever had the Dalwin, um, Dalwin, um, 16? It's, uh, you know, I, I, I hate the coloring, I hate the chill filtering. I'm not a fan of that. Is it a good sherry at 43%? It is. I mean, you know. You can't knock it if it tastes good, even with all that shitty ass coloring and chill filtering they do with it. But um, this with the Lafoy 10 might be good. You know what? I do have. Let's do a little experiment real fast. I'll be right back. I've got the Cast Strength 10 I've been saving. I want to do a little blend with this. I'll be right back. Let's see what happens. I have been enjoying a uh, an old. Uh, this is the uh, batch eleven cast strength ten fifty eight point six percent, and I believe this might have even came from Stephen. I can't remember. Is that your writing, Stephen? <laughs> I don't know whose writing that is. It looks familiar, but maybe not. I'm not. I don't think you write that messy. Maybe you do, but um, I did enjoy it. Neat, not not blended at all. So I appreciated it. Very good. Um, I am gonna try, and I think he's dead on. Uh, one was talking about a fifty-fifty with the Abana. This one, since the EBV on the Dolly one is um, is only forty-three, I'm thinking we might go heavier with the batch strength. Uh, carriages and really give it some uh, bandages, some TCP iodine hospitalization, and see what we get. This is kind of an interesting experiment here. I mean, Dalian uh, 16 is, a, is kind of a pre sherry bomb. I wouldn't say a bomb because it doesn't have the ABV to give it that oomph it does have the sherry presence though so i'm gonna try this together and see if we get like a lore-esque type of of dram just just for all sakes metairie 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 okay i'm assuming it's french uh, i give the lafroy 10 out of three the three out of two, five skin marks <sighs> skid marks oh lordy yes you described the oven on the morning what does it take to smoke a pool? I don't even know. I guess you're talking the Oblast is the way they uh, talk provinces and states over in Russia. So uh, I, I, um, I'm lost. <laughs> Have you had any unique finishes, random bottles lately? Oh, man. I mean, yeah, the, the uh, Benoit 21 was, was interesting. It's a Rachel Berry, you know, bottle. That kind of got me 
nervous, but it's actually decent, especially for the price, 99 bucks for 21 euro Bonnerich. That's, that's pretty damn good. Um, haven't got past the net pour yet, so I don't want to, you know, give it a, a, a review yet. I usually wait till I get halfway down the bottle and then do it. Uh, it's got some some three way um, finishes on it. It's got the the sherry. It's got some bourbon. It's got some uh, red wine cask influences. It's 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 complex. It's pretty good. I think it's uh, worth a worth a look, especially for that price. Um, that was one that stuck out lately. Uh, also, the Altavania I'll be reviewing soon. It's a, a distillery bottle. Not a statement, but for a, a space side that's peated, it's interesting and better than I expected it to be. I'll get more details for you later. Um, so stay tuned. Definitely, you know, stay tuned to the channel, the short reviews and the uh, the um, Short reviews and the, the discussion, I'm sure I'll cover it eventually. Needs to be an orange can and a clear bottle to be concept one. No, this is not concept one. This was like a, this looked like the other bottles, like some of the, um, but it was an OBA bottle. I don't think it was, um, I think it was like a black, like a, kind of typical Octomore can. I didn't look at the bottle inside. They just had it inside of a can. The can was black, but I swear it said OBA on it. I'm pretty sure. I got to go back and look. I'll, 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 hopefully to God they have it. If they don't, I'll be so sad because an Octomore and Black Hearts combination, man, holy. Um, what's the deal with the uh, Apollar Abana? Any good? Yes, it is good for certain batches. You got to be careful with the batches. Fifth, the, the mid fifties to mid sixties were good. I can vouch for those. Anything else, I can't vouch for. So, if you can find a, a late a mid fifties to mid sixties, late sixties, that I would I would go for that. Uh, those are pretty good. Old fashioned. That's one thing that's funny. My wife drinks a lot of old fashions and Manhattans and whatnot. I don't do the, the mixed drinks very often at all because I would like my single mod scotch. But if I was going to have one, that does sound intriguing. A, a smoky old fashioned with a hospitally uh, Lafroy sounds pretty good. Oh, wow. This is that blend we just did. I definitely get the Lafroy notes. Oh, wow. It's it's weird. It's like the pea in the in the sherry, it it goes together when this one, huh? It, it it's it brings a brightness almost to it too. The it, it transforms the pea and the sherry. It's like I don't know how to explain it, but huh? They're both there. That's good. Wow. <laughs> Oloroso sherry with some Lafroy 10 cast strength. I like it. I like it a lot. Wow. Not as dry as it was before the uh, addition of the uh, Lafroy cast strength 10 as well, which is a uh, blessing in disguise. Huh. Hell, I should buy a shitload of Lafroy 10 cast strength and Dalyuane 16 and blend it myself and sell it. I'd probably, make, probably be a fucking billionaire. <laughs> mm. That is a nice blend. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the uh, advice, I guess I should say, uh, one. And uh, I'll take you up and I'll try to see if I can get her to make me an old-fashioned with, uh, yeah, let's have pants on. Cast strength. It's for me. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, it's it's good. It, it's it was a great batch. I had the six before was my first. Um, the Lafroy ten cast strength. I uh, had a six when I started, and then you were gracious enough to uh, send me that eleven. And uh, I, I knew it was your writing for some reason. <laughs> and uh, wow, man, it's it's. It, it, I know you're probably thinking, what the hell's wrong with him for mixing in this, blending this? But I tell you, man, it's actually pretty damn good. I mean, the, the, the Dalyuan 16 is a four out of five, you know, before 
but this is like a 4.5 out of 5. Wow. It, 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 Oloroso and Lafroig are like... Uh, it's weird. I'm surprised when they did the PX cask, the one liter Travel Retail exclusive. Why didn't they do an Oloroso version? It's the only thing Lafroig hasn't tried, if you think about it, because they've had the Madeira, they've had the Amatiado, they've had the... Um, you know, the quarter cast, typical, the Fino Sherry. They've done the Triple Wood, the Woody Influence. They've never done an Oloroso Sherry. Why? Why? Because any, Can anyone tell me why is it that um, Lafroig has never done an Oloroso Sherry uh, Influence cast? It's weird. I'm not even. Uh, I'm. 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 I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, far gone enough to even entertain a search here. <laughs> I'll go back to the Discord and reach out. My penmanship sucks. It doesn't, man. Now you're. 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 You're fine. You're fine. I just lost the comments. Jesus. What the hell did I just do? Oh, there we go. Now your penmanship's fine, man. I mean, it's a hell of a lot better than mine. <laughs> I think, at least. Porto wee beastie bit. Oh, nice. Whiskey Ace, let me know in, in the comments, in the notes. What did you think of it? What did you like? What you dislike? If you think it's worth the price? I'm, I'm curious because I have not tried it yet. I am eager to try it, though. Um, yeah. I haven't had the Lafroy 10 yet, but they're asking myself to try it. You haven't had the uh, Lafroy 10 yet? You should get it, Ben. It's definitely worth it. Hey, Dustin, DHS, good to see you, man. Glad like, this case the end. Well, hey, how do you know it's the end? We're, we're still rolling, dude. This could go all night. You never know. Yep. Uh, what does the Benrock bottle look like? Do you happen to have it around? I love Benrock. Yes, I do. Just for you. I don't normally wouldn't do this, but for you, I will go find it, I think, <laughs> if I remember where I put it. Uh, give me a second. I'll be right back. I profusely apologize for that. But this was the uh, can. Let me take away the stupid uh, thing there. Uh, <laughs> here's the can, and it's you know it's a pretty basic, uh, pretty basic uh, presentation I'd say. And I was nervous when I saw this signature. I was nervous. I was like, oh shit, here she comes. <laughs> Oh shit! Here she comes. Rachel Berry is on the prowl, but you know we've we've had a little fun with this, and we'll we'll be doing a review on the twenty one here. Maybe next show. Maybe I might do the Altavania instead. Maybe save this for the next one afterward. But hundred bucks. I mean, it's hard to beat. It really is for the price. If and you can find it still. I just ordered it myself not too long ago. It's out there. Um, it, it it wasn't as good at first as I thought it would be, but after I got past the neck pour and I got like, you know, around this level, then we're talking some goodness. I'm here now, and once I get to right right here, I think I'll be ready to do the review on that one. Um it's 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 not bad, it's not outstanding, it's 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 definitely worth a hundred dollars. Put it that way, you know, no, no joke. Oh man, I missed where I was in the comments. Let me go back up here. <laughs> Sorry about that, but there you go. Good to see you, Dustin. Definitely. Oh lordy, and then try some Compass Box King Street. Yeah. Only had the uh, thirteen Madeira and the Burning Moss intensely peated. Want the heavily peated cast strength. The good thing about Benrack is they do have some decently peated 
offerings. The Curiositas at 10 years even is really good. The Septendecim 17 was really good too. I do like peated and non-peated bin racks. They, they are a good distillery, worth the venture, definitely worth the price. Oh, been dieting, so my glasses have been pretty dry lately. That's okay. At least we're still having fun there, DHS. And I really appreciate you stopping by. Uh, Dustin's got some really good knowledge on a lot of bottles. He uh, is one of the better collectors that I know. And uh, so if you're looking for any advice, uh, he's very particular as well. He's probably even more picky than I am, and I'm pretty picky. <laughs> Picked up the Kabuk in Lafayette for 55 bucks. That's a damn good deal, I would say. Galaxy 18, nine, uh, 1989 for 29 years, single cask. Wow, that sounds outstanding. Hmm. That's crazy, man. I, I'm, I'm afraid to ask what you had to shell out for that, but uh, hopefully it wasn't crazy. Madeira Benerik was incredible. Was that the peated or unpeated? That's a good question. Either one, I think I would like love it. Before he subbed old fashioned sounds like it could work. Yeah. I think it I think it would maybe uh, the only thing that makes me kind of nervous is the uh is the fact that you've got a lot of um the the hospital T C P iodine thing going on with the uh other stuff. I I don't know. One is right. I've done a the blend several times trying to recreate a Bomar fifteen. <laughs> But way better, yeah. That's the thing, man. That I don't even. The weird thing about the Boomer Fifteen is so bad now. I mean, at first I appreciated it for being kind of funky and different and being peated and whatnot. But after you've done your tour of Scotland, you go back to it. It's just it's such a thin, thin mouth coat. That's the first thing that's the problem. And the second thing is is that yeah, it's got some smoke. It's got peat. It's got sulfur. Yeah, it's just it's just not it's just not it's it's a little disjointed for some reason. I don't know what it is. That's a match made in heaven. <laughs> Phenomenal. Give for give me in April. Okay. Pick up a bottle of Kabuki every time I go to work or leaving work. Wow. I don't blame you. Balcones Hicheros. Hicheros? I'm not sure how you say it. Port finished with our big tin is unreal. Ooh. That's that Texan uh, whiskey. Uh, I know Balcones, but I don't know the Hicheros. Is that like a. I, I mean, I guess it's their port finished deal with. You're mixing it with the blend with the our big tin. That sounds good. I never. I think they try some Balcones. Alice seems to like PX. This is the thing, though. I just tried an Oloroso uh, 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 de, uh, Dustin. This is the Dalyan, Dalyan 16 Florin Fauna bottle. You know, I don't like the coloring. I don't like the chill filtering. I don't like the 43%. Everything else is great, though. So with that said, I thought, you know what? Let's take a, a Lafroy 10 cast strength batch 11. And let's 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 do a little blend. I tell you what, it's damn fucking good. I'm I'm, I'm not I'm not opposed to this at all. I like it maybe better. I do like the PX cask a whole lot, but this is really a good blend. I have to say. Doing fifty fifty, even with the fifty eight point six with the forty three. It's a good, it's a good marriage. I, I, I think, I like it. It's, it's funny because it's, it was dry as hell before. This, what I like about adding Oloroso to this, is it gives it that peat, gives it a liveliness and effervescence that I don't get. And with that marriage, you know, with the Oloroso, holy shit, it's a, it's a good combination. I've only had a Glenelicky twelve, but your bottle sounds amazing. Yes, it does. Never had anything from them, but best start with their good stuff. Oh man, if you never had a Glenelicky, uh, Dustin, you'll, you're in for a treat. The 18 is really good. Um, the 15 is really good, and even the 10 PX is really good. Glenelicky is one of the better um, distilleries that have a really good new line. I won't say new distillery, but they have a good uh, a new line of of uh, Scotch that's uh, definitely uh, up there. Waiting for that one to reach Hawaii, yeah, I can imagine. 
We see uh, it's worth trying for sure. Rebuy depends on local pricing. The tin is worth ten to fifty more in taste. Yeah. Okay. I, I definitely have to add it to the collection back here. As you can see, I got rid of all my core bottlings just to make make room for the uh, the weird stuff plus the committee releases and the uh, limited releases. None of these are core bottles up here now anymore. So. And I've run, already run out of room, so I'm gonna have to. I might have to start moving stuff around and make room for my Ardbeg and Lafroig to expand <laughs> even more than it already is. But uh, the Wee Beastie has to be added to the collection. I have to say, it's a blue can. It's unique. Yeah, it's it is a baby blue color, baby bluish kind of a gray slate. I would call it slate kind of a color. I'd say on that one. What's the story behind Rachel? I have no idea what you're all talking about with her. Okay, here's the gist of it. And I'm trying to, I don't know the years. I, I, it's funny because, you know, I've only been doing this for a few years. Like, you know, some of you guys have been doing it for four and five years and some even longer. Um, she was um, a big part of the, um, I want to say, uh, Ben Ryak as well as the Glendronic, um, knew she, I, I'm not sure if she came from Benroniac and went to Glendronic. Uh, she's had her hands in a lot of, uh, other things, I think. Uh, but primarily I know her from Benroniac and then to Glendronic. I, I can't, it, it, definitely feel free to speak up and tell your own story of what you know about Rachel Berry in the uh, comments and in the chat, whatever. But uh, she has been iffy historically as a master blender and not 100% of the time iffy. This one, I think I'm going to warm up to. I think this one's going to be good. You know, best 21 ever, most likely not. It's as good as the, you know, Glendronic Parliament. I'm not thinking that's going to happen, but, you know, is it as good as some other 21-year-olds? Yeah. Um, Is it worth $100? Hell yeah. I mean, the, the price is, is un ungodly low, surprisingly. Uh, maybe I just got lucky when I found it for that price. But uh, either way... Um, she has, has had ups and downs with her um, results as a master blender when it comes to certain offerings. And, and if you had to, you know, point a gun at me and tell me which ones specifically they were, I cannot remember because uh, it's been a while, but it's uh, been up and down with her on her. Oh, Bowmore. Bowmore was the other one. I forgot. I, it just came to my mind. She she got, I think, her start. And I might be off here. I'm, I'm kind of just going by what I, I'm trying to remember. And definitely feel free to correct me if I'm if I'm off. But I think she got her start at Bowmore. And, and Bowmore used to be classically, if you look at like the 70s and 80s, they had some really nice distillery bottles. When she came on board in Bowmore, they went downhill fast. And a lot of people, even to this day, are like, don't get a distillery bottle from Bowmore. Get an independent bottle unless it's like Devil's Cask or something really specialized, like Mezzanura Cask or something like crazy like that. You know, um, and then she went to um, from Bullmore, I guess, to – I'm not sure if the Benronic is an old thing or a new thing, but I know she went to Glendronic, and I think that's recently. And it's really kind of scaring me what she's going to do there, but we'll, we'll see. You know, I'm all for second chances or having a bad day. I know exactly how that goes. I have them myself. No one's perfect. Everyone's Everyone fucks up. You know, it really, it's just the way life is. So, you know, it, are, are there hits and misses in her portfolio? Probably, but everyone's got his misses if you think about it. I mean, some more than others, but, you know, I'm, I'm not knocking her, but she, she does have a history. We'll put it that way. If I heard another one about it, <laughs> but unlikely. We basically, I dig it. Similar to the Ardbeg Tim flavor profile, but the P has turned up a little. There's a faint Oloroso influence, but pretty vague. Now, when you see the, the Oloroso with the powdered sugar, 
with the 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 profile of an Ardbeg Tinman. That sounds glorious to me. I think I would love that. I gotta, I've got to, I've definitely got to get my hands on a bottle of that. I have to see. Uh, you're used to Ardbeg, is there? Okay. Hopefully, will you do? Okay, let's catch up here. Forty-seven bucks. Wow, that's that's a good price. She's the master seller of Benrec and now Glendronic. Okay, so she's doing both. She used to be a Bowmore before, from what I remember. How many people are from Louisiana here? There's a lot. We've got a lot of Louisianians. Uh, what do they seem to have a negative review? Let's see. Is it worth buy a both we beastie and tank to compare and contrast i would say it's worth it because they're not expensive drams we're talking 40 to 50 bucks here you can get both for under 100 dollars. i mean i know i know 100 dollars is a lot of money to a lot of people and that's fine but if you're gonna you know get a 10 and a wee beastie to compare and contrast i think it's you know, worth a little look. I, I would, I would love to see a personal shootout between the two. I'm not going to buy an Ardbeg 10 probably anytime soon. Cause I love all their other stuff that they have, but you know, as a, as a fan, I would love to see a 10 and wee beastie comparison just to see the differences. So I'd be up for seeing it. Definitely. I was told it was a limited release two to three years. Well, it was about 350 with shipping and currency conversion. 60.2%. That's a good deal, man. For that year, I think you said it was a 20-something year old. You got a good deal on that, Dustin, I'd say. Hell of a good deal on that. Thumbs up for the uh, buy on that deal. And that's your first Glenelicky, man? Jesus Christ. You ain't fucking around, are you? I'm typing too fast. I have to slow down. That's okay, man. Most of the people picked up the Wee Beastie for even less, 47 like 39 Yeah, it is kind of a fluctuating price when it comes to that one. Uh, being new, I think they're trying to test the market to see what they can get away with. Ten similar price than this new release. Chance to buy, try younger Ardbeg. I would go for it, too. I, I don't blame you. Was hired a master blender for Glendronic, Benronic, and Glengosco still strollers in 2017. Okay, now we're talking. Okay, so she was at Bowmore. She goes to Glendronic, Benrayek, and Glengosgo in 2017. Glengosgo is an interesting distillery if you guys are not familiar. I personally would, would steer you towards the Torfa. Um, a lot of people love the Revival. I did not like the Revival that much. Just me. I just, I just thought it was a little bland and, and just not my thing. The Torfa is a good dram. Now, was it pre-2017 that I had it. Um, let's take a look. Thankfully, I have the bottle right here. <laughs> um, let me uh, get my chair fixed here. Sorry, guys. Um, this is uh, what it looks like. It's a Glen Glasgow a Torf, a richly peated, non-chill filtered and natural color, which at least they did that right. Um let me see if I can uh, find a, a date. 50% ABV, by the way. 50. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. Um, not a fan of the NAS thing, but, you know, other than that, to be non-chill filtered, non-colored, non and to be at uh, a good 50% uh, ABV, I even think Stephen Connor would be up for this one. Stephen, have you had this one before, and do you like it? Do you prefer the Revival? I'm just curious what you think about uh, the old Torfa here. What year was this done? I wish I could tell easily. Maybe the bottle. Let's see. I can't reach it. One second. I killed this one a long time ago, as you can tell. Let's see. Brown Foreman in Louisville, Kentucky, where I'm from originally. Uh, if it's Brown Foreman, that tells me that it's got to be... Oh, 2017. December 7th, 2017. 
December 7th, 2017. Okay. Well, that would have been after her arrival. So she did a good job with this one. Well, there you go. I have to say, uh, I guess uh, it's not all it's not all bad. She probably thinks I hate her, but I don't. I think that uh, I'm just, you know, I'm just picky, and I, I, I'm kind of torn with that. But uh, that's the Torfa. If you haven't had it, I would definitely pick it up. You know, maybe look for the Revival, too, on the side. Only had a few expressions of Bowmore didn't enjoy any of them. Yeah, it's kind of a hit and miss thing. Some of her new Glendronics are very good, but I don't like the Glendronic post steam stills nearly as much as the coal fired and especially floor malted and dried with coal and peat yeah okay i'm i'm with you it's too expensive to buy i think he means cask whiskey at 100 which anything would be after shipping from uk rather be safe if it costs more yeah no i hear you I know what you're saying there. I saw an independent bottling of Glen Glasgow the other day. I had no clue. Yeah, Glen Glasgow, you know, I've never had their independent bottlings. I can't speak for that, but their distillery bottlings are actually pretty decent. Uh, the Torfa is the one I would get myself. Uh, the reason I say that is because I had a sample first, and I liked it so much that when I thought, you know, if I get a bottle of Glen Glasgow, I've got to get a bottle of Torfa. Skip the revival, even though people rave about the reviews on that one. just wasn't for me. For me, the Arbic 10 is a buy over the Wee Beastie. I wasn't a fan of the uh, Wee Beastie, and I'm a fan Arbic fanboy. Okay, just too young. I've had many Kilhomans that are far superior to the Wee Beastie. Of course, they are more expensive. Well, the Kilhomans, I'm sure, are more, yeah. The, the, that's, a, that's the only problem with Kilhomans, is, man. They, they're not shy about their price being, like, out the wazoo. It's crazy with the uh, prices. But, uh... Steven, though, you have to admit, you're Steven, you're you're a fan of no, but you do like high cast strength stuff, so I guess I shouldn't say that. Hmm. Maybe it is just, you know, I don't know. I, I wanna try it just just to just to try it. The nick quality of wood. Eh, well our bit not so much. Well I don't know, I mean how many bad Arbigs have you had compared to anything else though my question like if you look at Arbig the core you got the 10 the Anno the Cory Vrickin and the Ugadal that's the core okay outside the core I've got the Supernova the Blasta the Kildalton the Ardbog the Ereveritas the Perpetuum the Dark Cove the Kelpie the Grooves the Drum the Black I can go on and on what what is it that even wood wise are you lacking there i mean they're not really i guess i wouldn't say they use poor quality wood they just don't use a whole lot of wood period thankfully because that's one thing that i don't really get into in, in like the lafroy triple wood kind of shit you can put way too much oakiness too much wood in into the the deal to me but i don't know that's just my my preference pre-96 yeah It's okay, man. <laughs> Interesting in the Torfa. I would definitely pick it up. It's, it's, it's a peated dram. It's, it's definitely worth the look. I'm not used to working out thing. It's like being drunk without the fun. <laughs> I hear you, man. Similar age Kilhomans. I gotcha. Yeah, the five-year-old. Uh, yeah. No, you're right. It's just the price is where the Kilhomans get you, though. The price is just so much ash to the profile of it yeah i i i'm a huge fan um the Seneg and the glock gorm i like both of those let's get rid of the no and that's the thing man uh, uh, hold on for a second now i know a lot of uh, people are not no fans and i know roy aquavite wasn't one of them either but here's the deal think i mean price wise i know it's a little more than the select but the the select 
versus the NO. Would you rather have a Lafroy select than an NO? I don't think so. The NO I thought was pretty good. It has a white ashtray with sweet mint. And, uh, I, I liked it. I, I thought it was pretty good. No, is 70 75 too high for it? Yes. Should it be priced around 60 That would be fair. That's the only beef I have with the NO. I wish that they would just lower the price on it. Then I would be, you know, more cool with about it. But at the same time, you know... I'm sure there's some like crazy shit that they're using to, to get it there that maybe that's why they're charging a little more, 70, 75 bucks for it. But the bottle uh, I got hides its age pretty well. Huh. It's not as good as the tin, and it's $20, $30 more. Which one are you talking about? The uh, trying to get. Oh. See, I see the price. The price is the problem. It's not the juice. It's the price. If the price was like, you know, 50, 55, would you like the NO? I would think you would because it's, it's, a, it's a nice tasting whiskey, I thought. But maybe I'm one of the very people that actually like it. Uh, only have had samples of the Lock Quorum and the uh, Vintage 2008 Very Good Scott. Yeah, I've got the 2008 back here. I've got the uh, Sauternes, the original cast drink. Lot Gorm, the red wine cast, the Seneg, the bourbon uh, from Cruncher Vintner, single cask, the STR. Kilhoman does a really good job overall. I've had very few Kilhomans that I was ever like, eh. I think nearly all the core Ardbegs are used a lot and very much refilled cask. Well, me meanwhile, Kilhoman is buying the best of the best bourbon cast from Buffalo Trace. Well, uh, here's the deal. With Kilhoman, yes, they are buying really good bourbon casts from Buffalo Trace, which I commend. But Arbeg is not using a lot of refilled casts, I would say. I mean, the Ugadal, the Ardbog, they do not taste like refilled casts by any means. This might be a refill cast, the Dahlia 1, uh, 16. Ardbeg's I don't taste refilled casts in their shit. I might be wrong. I'm not, I'm not a, you know, I don't work for them. I don't know anything about how they make it, what they use, you know, to a certain degree. But the taste, the Ardbog and the freaking, um, the Dark Cove and the, uh, the even the Ugadal, the Quarry of Reckon, you get refilled casts out of that? Come on, man. I don't know. Torfa was pretty good and one's with me on that one. The STR. The STR was kind of, that was the only rare kill home. And I, I mean, I like it. It doesn't like blow my socks off like some of the other. The red wine cast blew my socks off. That was an awesome uh, one. And the original cast drink, that one blows my socks off. Some of the other ones are, I mean, the lot Gorm blew my socks off. That one's great. But the, the STR was good. But Ah oh, man, I don't know. If the no was less than than a ten, I'd buy it. Yeah, there you go. If it was fifty five, you know, but yeah, I like it. There you go. At least I got somebody to admit that they like it. Never had the no yet, but if Telex liked it, then I'll try it. Well, there you go. It, this here's the deal. The no is a very white ashtray. I mean, think white ashtray kind of notes with a sweet mint type of presence. If you like sweet mint, if you like a white ashtray, and if you like the Ardbeg tin in general make, the, the basic juice, then you'll like the NO. If you're not down with the white ashtray notes in your face, and if you're not down with a sweet minty release, then you're not going to like the NO. It's okay to say Ardbeg didn't make the best decision with the NO. I think for an entry-level scotch to compare with the Select, I think it, it kicks the Select's ass. And I will say that 30,000 times. Did they get it right with the price point? No. It's too expensive. That is the problem. It's not the taste. It's the price. 
you got to admit it's a good it's a good taste i mean it, unless you just don't like white ashtrays and and you know white grapes and and mint you know then i can understand you not liking it but give me cast strength our big 10 and a sherry matured our big with the you know casks <laughs> that sounds pretty good if you know it was around 50 i'd still choose the 10 would you choose the 50 at choose uh what would you choose at fifty dollars? The no or the the ten? Okay, here's the difference. Now you got to keep this in mind too. I do not like lime with my scotch. Lime, especially lemon lime mix, is not my favorite. So even though I'm one of the biggest Ardbeg fanboys you will ever fucking meet in your life, the Ardbeg Ten is not my favorite ten year old scotch. I love all their other stuff. I am not a huge fan of the tin because I do not like lemon lime flavor. That's just that's that's just the gist of it. That's the only reason that I would prefer the NO over the tin. So there you go. It's all about your subjective, you know, taste points to a to a deal. I'm convinced Arbig does not put out a bad whiskey, but who knows? I agree, whiskey ace. I have not had a bad Arbig. I mean our, you know, Lafroig has their select. They have their four oak bullshit. Ardbeg doesn't have that. That's why I think Ardbeg is a superior brand. That's just me, but um, that's just you know the way I look at it. I think that's why I, I think Ardbeg is my favorite above all. Um, Bunnahaven's really close by. Kilhoman's even close by. Even though they don't have a fifteen or eighteen or twenty one year old statement yet. Um, I think it goes Ardbeg, Lafroig, and then maybe Bunahav and the Kilholm. And I think they're my first, my, my top four. That's just me, though. Only had the 10 and the Ugadal. Well, even when you try any Ardbeg, definitely try the, if you, if you don't mind spice, now you have to be down with the white pepper, the black pepper. If you, you know, if you like Talisker, Definitely try the Cory of Reckon. It's really, really good. If you're not down with the white pepper or the black pepper or a Talisker, stay away from the Cory of Reckon because it's, it's, it's great. I'm starting to get irked at the prices with Ardbeg compared to the quality. I'm going to say it, but I've been disappointed with the CR releases for the price since after the Dark Cove. Um, after the Dark Cove. Now, Stephen, for the Kelpie, I mean, we got Black Sea fucking casks. That that shit was like a German breakfast in a glass. I thought it was outstanding. I can't believe you did not like the, the, the Kelpie Dark Cove. I'm sorry, the, the Kelpie committee release. I'm surprised you didn't like that one. The Grooves committee release, that was like a barbecue at the freaking Cayman Islands, like St. George's and shit. I'm, I'm surprised you didn't like that one either. The drum, I did not like as much. I will agree with you on the drum. The Black Committee release was, was a 4.25 out of 5. I thought it was a, a really well done. Had really nice red roses and peat and chocolate in your face, but still refined. And I, I don't know. I, I, I like the Black, too, uh, Committee release. But the only one I wasn't happy with was the drum. I thought the other ones were pretty good for the um, for the committee release. Now the the limited release, I was not happy with the grooves. It, I thought it was a little a little flat. I thought Mo was right when he talked about the grooves being flat on that one after re revisiting it. Um, the Kelpie limited, I remember enjoying it. I don't think it was that bad. Uh, the drum limited, I, I would skip. The black I haven't tried new limited, but you know, I mean, we'll see. I, I just I think the drum was the only let down in that deal. I really like the newest Supernova though. Yeah, Supernovas are awesome. I've only had the 2009. I was lucky enough to get the Stellar release, but really liked it. Uh, yeah, the Grooves I thought was pretty good. He didn't like uh, the other ones though. So did you not like the new black uh, DHS? And did you not like the uh, Kelpie Committee? Is this the only two? I think you guys were talking about just hit the Corey Franken. Supernova was killer, yeah. Imagine the 2009 shit, dude. That shit is unbelievably good. 
Hold on, let me go back up here. Where did I miss here? Here we go. Community releases are gouging. Yeah, it, they're a bit they're a bit pricey. After a secondary market, I would skip. You got to get them like early. Yep, I do love the Corey, the Oogie, and the Tin. Definitely filling pockets. Tastes like the, tastes like all the new Arbit community releases are too young. They're trying to cover up with wine casks. So you're you're really shooting for the guts of the release. So if you take let's let's just talk Kelpie here for a second, right? So if we take the Kelpie, you're saying that you think the the juice, the underlying juice is too young that they're using with the Black Sea um, casks to cover it with you know the taste, but. How could it be as complex as it is with just the cask influence and not a good make, not a good like structure? That's what that's what I'm kind of like missing because I could have sworn that when I tasted it, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm maybe the refinement I'm not getting yet. And you guys are I know you guys have been around the block a lot more than I have on some of these things, so maybe that's what what's what's lacking. I'm just not picking it up yet, but. I could see that you, you're missing like a, a refinement age type thing with that. Hmm. It's starting to feel like Corey and Yugi are cheap bourbon cask, a bit too young. And then they're covered up by secondary finishing. I'm assuming you're talking about the newer stuff because the older stuff doesn't taste like that. The older Corys and Yugi dolls are, are really good, I thought, but I don't know. Bit too young and then covered up by secondary finishing. Huh. Could be. If I had had the newer version, stuck them in the older ones. Yeah, the older ones are, are pretty good. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what my whole point was, Daniel, is that the, the Ardbeg released the NO to compete with the Select. They didn't release it to compete with, you know, the Lafroy quarter cask. I mean, that was like their entry level shit. And that's the same thing with the NO is supposed to be another entry level core offering. The problem was they got the price wrong. And that's what kills me. 10 is 65 Canadian, the NO and Uga dollar 90, 95. See, that's crazy prices. The, the, the NO should be 70 ish, but even that is a little pricey. Um, either I've changed what they have. They don't taste like they did four or five years ago. I think that's the, that's what you're really t talking about. DHS is not really what they did before, but what they're doing now is what you're not really into. Corey has great viscosity. It's true. The bitter citrus. Is, yeah. See, I don't dig the bitter citrus in the, uh, the tin. It's just not my thing. The lemon lime flavor just is just, uh, I told my brother I'd take two good dolls over three Arctic tins. Yeah, I'm the same way. I, I'd much, much, much rather have an Uga doll than an Arctic tin any day. Craver can used to have the awesome coffee and dark note. Now it's mostly pepper and spice. It just doesn't have the depth. I remember. I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with that. I think you're. I think you're right. The um, I don't like Kelpie one bit. Wow. Uh, it's it's definitely different. I thought it tasted like a German breakfast in a glass. It had the spatzel, the the sauerkraut, it had the the mustard, it had the the pepper. I mean, it had all sorts of of crazy shit going on. I thought that was really good, but it is a lot different than the, the typical shit. But I don't I don't know. It's never said I didn't like any of them, but I'm talking about the price to quality ratio. I got you there. Yeah. The black was so young tasting to you? Hmm. I'm trying to reflect back. You see, that's the thing. When I when I go for a whiskey, I'm not taste I'm not going for especially if it's NAS, I'm not going for it thinking I'm gonna get some 18-year-old whiskey or 21-year-old whiskey. It's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna get like a mixture of three, five, seven year old shit with some 15-year-old stuff, and hopefully it's combined together. It's got a, a really good flavor, which I thought it did with the red wine cask, the Pinot Noir cask, you know, influence. But I mean, to get the peat level, 
the smokiness, the the oomph factor. Sometimes you gotta blend some young shit with it. I mean, I guess the fact, I guess what kills you guys is the fact that you're paying money for a mix of really young shit with some really old. Sh well, no, I shouldn't say really old shit, but some older stuff. And the price of the new stuff is is what's killing you. That the fact that they're taking some younger stuff and mixing with some older stuff to get that level and i i i understand the the beef with the price issue i don't like the fact that it was 120 130 dollars for the committee release but 110 i thought was more than worth it you know if it was 110 i'd buy it all fucking day long but i felt long rose much better longer weds yeah Oh, it's it's by far older than Wee Beastie. It's, I'm sure it's got some five to seven year old shit, and it's got some fifteen, maybe even eighteen in it. It's it's got you know, that's the thing with NESs. You have to remember they're they're mixing a lot of they're blending a lot of shit together. But you know, I mean, for people that want to taste just a flat, you know. 15, 18 year old whiskey. That's that's not for you. NESs are just not for you. It's just the way it is. It's okay if you feel that way about Ardbeg. That only means that Rafoy would walk your world. Uh oh, now we've got some crazy uh, no name uh, pirate. Um, it's like it's like it's like an eclipse with a sm oh, the frowny face in the middle. <laughs> with the top. I'm not sure how to take that, but welcome either way. I like pirates. I use the same the same Exidia when I'm doing the short wave with the short wave pirate radio shit i love ardbeg but don't get me wrong uh, i have tons of lafrag and i love it all so i'm getting turned off by the very expensive nes bottles that's the thing though guys you got to remember we're taking yes some young stuff but we're mixing it with older shit it's not all seven eight year old stuff that's in there josh from texas good to see you man i'm glad you, you came on board long row is delicious yeah i agree it's been around two, two, uh, two months since I poured some Holland Park 16. Twisted Tattoo. Whoa, it's gotten better. Yeah, super good. You suggested it. Well, there you go, man. It's one of those, I think, that, that takes a little time to oxidize. But I drank mine pretty fast. I liked it out of the gate, to be honest with you. I was not hesitant about pouring and enjoying that dram. I thought it was, you know. Out of the bottle, even that pour I thought was pretty good for a vanilla bomb. It's a vanilla bomb. You had to like vanilla for that one. One less lemon lime flavor. Yeah, some people like it. Some people not. Are you a fan of alcohol? I, I look behind me and, and let me know what you think. <laughs> Howdy, Josh from Alberta, Canada. Yeah. Alberta, Canada. Yeah. I don't think Black had any older stuff in it. I think it was all under seven. Oh, come on, man. Are you serious? You can't be serious. Let me think. With the red roses, the dark chocolate, the milk chocolate, the the all the the notes I got off that at the end with the um, the peat smoke level level being what it was, I I would just be really damn surprised if there wasn't at least some fifteen year old shit in there. That's just me. Hey, man, good to meet you. Don't forget when I first see that whiskey as an ES, they do. Right. It's all good. Yeah. I mean, I don't freak out about NESs either, but we are. I think the difference is that Steven, Dustin, some of these guys that have been around the block a lot longer than us, they're not used to seeing these NESs and they're like, you know, what the fuck is this shit about? And I can understand and appreciate that. But if you look into. I mean, I wish they were a little more upfront with their recipes. If they were more upfront with the recipes, I think you guys would be maybe into it better. But if you guys can't taste the the old whiskey in there, then you just don't taste it. And if you don't taste it, you're not going to be you know happy. So uh, I don't know. I'm just wondering how much of this is psychological versus how much of this is actually real. I'm, I, I need to get Ardbeg to let me know what their black recipe is. I'm going to do some homework, guys. I'm, I, I'm not promising I can get anywhere. Um, 
but it it it, it doesn't hurt but it, it's just it, it kind of pains me to see some of you guys that are anti the the the, the new black because that one's a shitload better than the drum ever thought of being and i think it's because they were using some 15 17 year old shit in there I, i'm gonna have to go do some research and see you know what they were using uh because i I would be surprised if it was just seven-year-old stuff like the, Dustin was saying. I, I don't know. We, we got to find out, though. Okay. What is your, what are your favorites? 10 to 12, 15, 18, or NASs? It depends on what the bottle is. I mean, I do love some 10-year-old whiskey. There are some good 10s. Benevis 10 is a solid whiskey from the distillery. I wouldn't fuck with it. It's, it's great the way it is. I love 12-year-olds. Glendronic 12, one of the best bottles of all time. 15s. I love 15s. Holland Park 15 is one of my favorite bottles of all time. The old 15. 18s. I love 18s. Most of my bottles you'll see back here are 18s. Holland Park 18, the Kregelicki 17, the Old Pulteney 17, the Talisker 18, the Balvenie 17 uh, Double Wood, the Longmorn 16. I'm just going back here. The... Um, Glen Farkle 17, the Craig Ellicke 18, the um, the Dalmore 18 even is a good, a great bottle for what it is. I do like NASs. There's some great NASs. The uh, Holland Park Valkyrie. I just and 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 I think that uh, Stephen Connor will attest that this really surprised a lot of people. It's an NAS. It's the hev It's the heaviest peated Scotch that Holland Park offers. This is a good dram. It, even though it's NES, it's not shit. I'm telling you, you got it. You got it. You, you know, you just got to try it. Do samples, and and see what what you like and what you don't like. It's not about the years all the time. It's about the taste. The overall taste is what we're shooting for here. I suffer from addiction for 14 years. The problem is that my relatives in my if let me because of the addiction. If I go deep with alcohol, I'll regret it. Well, if if you have an issue where you can't control it, man, you probably need to step away from a while and maybe reapproach it at a later time. I don't want to get into, you know, psychological stuff here on the channel, but, um, it's a real, it's a real serious issue with some people and you got to be careful and, uh, you know, I'm not sure what you're doing at a whiskey channel. If you think you've got an addiction, you probably should step away and, and take a break for a while and, Maybe after a year or so, see if you can moderate yourself. It's all about moderation. That's the way I look at it. But I tasted young. Not as young as the we beastie, but still too young for that price. Way too young for the price. Okay, well, I mean, that's the thing. If, if, you're, if you are equating age for money, then I can't dispute that. I'll agree with you. But if you're talking quality of taste for money, I think the black is well worth 120 bucks. I mean, that to me, I thought it was it was a 4.25 out of 5. I'll stand by that every day of the week, especially compared to the drum. I thought the drum was a piece of shit compared to the black. Not even thinking about young or old or what they use as far as 15-year, 10-year, 5-year. I'm in my soapbox now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, yes, the the youth does have a factor, but if you take young whiskey that's peated, I mean, we're looking for peat and smokiness. You can't get that out of 20-year-old whiskey most of the time that I've ever had. Once you get to Lafroig after 18, I think they're shitty compared to the younger ones. That's just That's just me, but I don't know. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> I also like the twist tattoo out of the gate. Just uh, got put up in the back out of reach. Now the vanilla seems to be more intense, bro. Okay, yeah, that sounds good to me. If there's a 15-year-old whiskey in black, even a drop, I'd eat my hat. I'm going to find out. I'm going to do my homework. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fucking call these motherfuckers <laughs> in Scotland if I have to. It'd be like, look, guys, I've got a dispute. I've got to settle. I don't care how secretive you are. We got to figure out what you guys are doing in the black. I mean, it's Mickey Head's last hurrah. It's his last fucking hurrah. He's done. He's gone. Do you really think he's going to use anything younger than, I mean, 
I mean, yes, you might use some seven, eight-year-old shit in there, but for God's sakes, he's got to be using 15, 17-year-old stuff as well. I'm, I'm going to find out. I'm going to find out. I'm going to, I am going to, I'm going to fucking call them and, and see if I can figure it out. Hell, I buy NAS bottling. It's just got an Arbeck 2010 Supernova in today, but I know what the taste. I, I, I'm not disputing that, but I don't think you have to have all old whiskey to taste good. I think you can mix some five and seven with some 15 and 17 and make it work. I remember the Scotch test dummies mentioned the age of the black and how long it was in the wine casks. I'm not sure about that. No way it was all five year in Pinot. Yeah. I, I don't know. All five, five years. Yeah. I, th I think it was actually, um, well, well, we'll cross that bridge later. I've got plenty of NAS whiskey. Some tastes like they blend good stuff. Look at the lore. Darn good. And see, that's the weird thing. You're thinking, you're telling me that the lore is a much superior whiskey than the black. I just, I mean, I like both. I, I like both a lot. I just don't see the youth as, as being up front in the black more so than lore. And I'm telling, I'm here to tell you, lore has some three to five year old shit in there. It's not all 15, 18 year old whiskey. They would call it the fucking Lafroy 18 if that was the case. Sorry, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little frisky. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could hear, hear this, but I'm telling you what, that Lord has some young stuff in it. I can taste the youth in the lore. Jesus Christ, you guys are going to get me on a fucking, like, I'm going to go off. <laughs> I'm almost prefer NES because of the unique flavors. I'm not worried about the age statement unless it's one of the staple age for the particular brand. Then, uh, uh, maybe, may, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm missing it. By the way, uh, well, I appreciate, uh, I'm glad you appreciate it, man, because I'm like, I'm trying to like, I mean, I know where you guys are coming from. I just, I would be surprised if they have anything that's that if they don't have anything older than 12 years in that black i'll eat my fucking hat if, if they if they don't because that stuff tastes a little older on some parts of it i, I don't know we'll we'll see compass block is all in es i think younger pete has upsides and trade-offs too yes it, you had to get the 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 peat smoky edgy notes in a whiskey you have to sometimes if you're doing like um, a specialty where you're doing some of these crazy cask you know experimentations you got to put some young peat in there to give it a little oomph i mean that's just the way it is the vol father that's this one um okay steven steven connor here's a, a good question for you you just had the D bottle that I sent you guys. What do you think years was in here? I guarantee you that they have some young and older shit in here. I would say they have some five to seven year old peated whiskey. This is the heaviest peated Highland Park there is. But they also have, I mean, to get it that really nice sherry note that comes with it, I, I would be surprised if they're not using some 12 to 15 year old stuff in here. I, 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 I'm just, it, it, it pains me that, that, that they don't tell you because I'm thinking that um, there's got to be 12 to 15 because it's such a good scotch. It really is, but I don't know. Steve is probably going to say that he thought that Valvoir Father tasted older than the black, but I'd be surprised. <laughs> there you go. Oh man, I like the whole seriously. I did not like the Valkyrie that much. I thought the Valkyrie. You want to talk about young whiskey? The Valkyrie tasted like all five to seven year old shit to me. I'm just saying. I mean, the finish was lackluster. It had no finish really. The Valk nut was a step a step up. It had a lot of like you know uh, cashews and walnuts and and some nutty niceness going on and the valve father to me is the best of the whole series but uh see he liked the he liked the uh the valkyrie i i just you know i i, I did not get into that 
the taste is more important age i think it's i, th I think it's i think it's right that that it's more about the taste than the actual age that's just me you know i don't know i mean i i guess maybe i'm not tasting what what uh they're 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 somehow tasting over use of youth whiskey compared to older stuff and that's where he's coming off i think with the msrp not being you know worth it which i can't dispute that but i'm just surprised that i'm not tasting this overabundance of youthful whiskey with the older stuff i thought that was pretty good yes i thought it was very good <laughs> 20 thoughts one of his favorite bottles ever <sighs> I uh, see it, it to me you have to have some youthful peat in there and that's why I prefer an 18 but you know it's it's I don't know I bet most people don't even think about the NAS situation with compass box they just fan it a bit <laughs> yeah I think you're right people you know some people well it, it depends you know compass boxes is, is got i think both sides they have a lot of people that are new to the whiskey game that do the king street stuff and the spaniard and some of their uh spice tree like their their entry level bottles and they're pretty good for what they are but you also have some of these you know people that are like steven even that you know the three-year what is it the three-year deluxe and the fucking um uh, the muse and the the damn um the phenomenology was a great bottle uh, so they have some really high-end stuff too that definitely has some old whiskey and what i do appreciate for um for the phenomenology it's got some it's got some old old stuff in there uh it's it's glenn lossy mostly which is an an underrated unknown distillery but it, it i thought it was exceptionally good and and so let's just to let you know Stephen, i went through that whole bottle pretty quickly <laughs> the, the compass box phenomenology is gone <laughs> that sucker was good and i enjoyed that i love compass box but I go into it not giving a damn about age, yeah. But it's it, it they have some really old shit in there too. Sorry, but I've had many Lafroigs, Port A Ellen's, Ardbegs, Lagavulin's, etc. that are very peated after twenty years. The the thing the only thing I could think of that I'm probably missing in my portfolio is tasting is the independent older bottlings. It's got to be what it is, because to get the heavy peat, I just from distillery bottles, I just don't see it. I just, I just have not seen it yet. With that said, I've, I haven't opened my 18 official Lagavulin yet, which I'm eager to open. I'm sure that's going to be nice. Um, but the 20, I never had the 21 or 25 Lagavulin, so I can't speak to that. The um, the Ardbeg 20-something, uh, the 23-year-old version I've had, that has peat, but, you know, and it's a really damn good tram. But that's a $500 whiskey. I mean, we're talking crazy money once you get, you know, up to that level. But, I don't know. You, you get what you pay for. Don't forget that, too. We're talking Lafroy Black is 120 Some of the whiskeys you're talking about are probably three dollars $500, too. Um, who said that Laura was all good uh, old whiskey? No, I'm not saying it's all all old. It's a good blend, but there's some, some really young shit in there. There's some really young stuff. Blackhead new make notes in it. Hey, I get the same thing out of the lore too, and it's the same fucking price. So I guess we're gonna have a black lore shoot off or something. <laughs> I'm not much of a love for pro fan fan though, huh? I like them both. I, for real, do not care about age at all. An age a statement is nice. However, I don't care how old something is when it comes to what I like. Give me a Brook Lottie Classic Lottie forever. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate the... Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the old stuff, you know. I'm sorry I'm so far behind on comments, but I appreciate some of the old stuff, too. But it, it, it it's like, you know... It's got to have a little new in there sometimes, I think, to make it... Depends on what cast they're using. An opinion noir cask is not something that you just 
fucking fuck around with every day. I mean, I, I mean, how many Pinot Noir Vince Flint's cask whiskeys can you think of? There's not that many of them. Um, I don't know. Has some Sazerac new make tastes like sweet cornbread. That sounds good. Uh, for me, the stage shape is not as important as the taste. No, but it's also compared to the black. Um, with the peat and the, I thought it was a comparable dram with the 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 Volfather with the black. I mean, the price point is much better on the Volfather. I'll give you that. But as far as like a, a quality whiskey, I think they were both comparable. But I, I don't know. I, I, I think I, I, th I think you guys are saying that you taste a lot of new make in the black, and I just, I just don't get where you're getting that Ardbeg Tin Flat new make taste out of the black i just I, I didn't get it but maybe i'm missing something i'm not saying you guys were wrong i'm just saying i'm i'm just not quite there yet i gotta work on you know some of my tasting to get to that level i guess to taste the new make in something like that because i thought it tasted pretty elaborate and complex and and i didn't get a lot of new notes on it but three or deluxe yeah i had to get another bottle it go beyond uh, just saying age isn't necessarily the point. Yeah. Age for age isn't that important. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I do, don't get me wrong. I, I, I know Stephen and, and DA and Dustin, I agree with them when the ref refinement is, an, is for to be an excellent whiskey, it does have to have that quality. I'm just surprised they didn't get that out of the uh, the deal. The Arbic 23 being less peated than 25, maybe not way less. I I didn't get that at all. I thought they were. I thought the Arbic 23 was peat level in in smoke level to me was comparable. I preferred the 23 to the um, Lafroy 25, but I don't know. You know, some people, it is a lot of this is subject, subjective. Don't forget that, you know, some people just like Lafroy better than Ardbeg, and some people just like Ardbeg better than Lafroy. It's, it, it is what it is when it comes to that kind of stuff. One of the favorite bottles of Oak Cross. That's a good one. I'm sending you a heavily painted older stuff. They are independent bottlings other than the Portland's and Lagavulin's. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see it because I, I just I'm I don't know. I wish I had more. I mean, I went through that that black pretty quickly because I thought it was pretty good. Um, but never had one. I don't much bother core anymore. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you guys putting up with my craziness because I can get I can get a little a little crazy when it comes to some of this stuff. But I I will definitely admit you some of you guys and I'm talking about Dustin and, and Steven, You guys have more experience probably than I do, um, so I'm still you know learning. But I'm I'm I am passionate about my black man. I thought that CR was pretty damn good. I, I'm surprised you guys didn't like it as much. I, I'm 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 kind of shell shocked because compared to the grooves and the drum, I'm, 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 I thought the black was like way up there comparatively. But I don't know. When I say taste young, that generally a negative note. It means that I taste ethanol or wort or just that barely. So almost, okay, that's maybe what I'm missing. I think maybe Dustin's touching on a point that I never really thought of. He's talking about maybe the hotness of of it and the black having the hotness. Now that I won't dispute. Did it have a hot kind of a bite? And see, I think, and I'm not saying it's a bad or good thing. And I know some of you guys think it's a bad thing. I think they're masking some of that with the um, with some of the 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 peat smoke level. And maybe that's what they don't like. Maybe Stephen and Justin don't like it when they use a younger bit 
to mask the alcohol taste of the dram itself with it being like the the the, the new make the, the level i kind of see what you're saying hmm. i'm trying to remember how hot i thought it was it wasn't like a, a tame dram and the kelpie did have that too it was but the quarry frickens like that to an extent uh, I mean, maybe the older quarry frickens aren't as bad as the newer ones maybe that's the difference is i came on the tail end of when they were getting the, the nas's the good ones when they went and started going downhill i have had some good ones and maybe some of the other ones were just are not as good but i don't know i'm trying to oh god same price i've only had the uh the two the three and the four i have not had the five i can't comment yeah we'll have to talk about this over a dram sometime man i've had the arbic 23 and side by side more than once and still prefer the 25 i'm sure it's not even fair. I'm an art bag guy generally. Wow. I'll have to try it again. Maybe I, I mean, it's, it's, when you're at these expos, I never had a bottle of 25. I can't afford that. I had it at an expo. Probably at the expo wasn't the best uh, situation to sit down and try a 25 year old whiskey comparative to another one. But that's the kind of the, the rough part of dealing with those things. But I know you really know what you're talking about, but some of the companies possibly really like pointing. Well, yeah, good is good, but I know what they're saying. I kind of, I kind of understand what they're getting at. He thought that Tobias and the Angel is one of the best. I mean, no offense, Daniel, that's one of those that is disputed. Some people really didn't get into it and thought it was not worth the five hundred dollars or whatever they were charging for the. Uh, for the uh, release of that, no idea until I read the fact that she was drinking. Huh? Not the hotness, the taste of the young whiskey, getting new make notes. See, I'm surprised. So, you are you telling me that you're able to pick out the Ardbeg tin aspects out of the black? See, to me, I, I the funny thing is, I can't stand the Ardbeg tin really lemon lime factor so i didn't get that at all in the black that's what's what's freaking me out is i mean what notes are are you talking about the hotness the 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 ethanol factor is that what i'm missing it's more a bitter alcohol if that makes sense i could see someone calling it that hot okay i think I, I think i see what you guys are seeing is 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 the the hotness factor the 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 not the the traits of the Ardbeg tin per se, the, the 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 lemon lime and the that kind of thing. I guess it's more of the um, just the overall alcohol taste being hot. Okay, I I won't dispute that. I never really thought of that when I'm tasting whiskey. To me. I don't mind the hotness factor, and maybe that's why I kind of overlook it. I think that maybe that's the problem, is that when I'm reviewing and I'm tasting, I'm tasting it, and you guys, and some of you guys that are more well versed in it, maybe are picking up on getting that raw like alcohol flavor, and to me, it's like. I don't want to say it's not there. Maybe it's just not as important to me as other aspects to it. And maybe that's why I'm overlooking it. And that's kind of a fault on my my side. Maybe I should look for that more often. And maybe if and what I'll do for you guys is even if I don't if I don't dislike it, I will comment if I'm getting like the hotness factor. Cause I do, when I do tastings, I do have a hotness factor sometimes that I'm picking up and sometimes I comment about it and sometimes I don't. So maybe I should do that more often where I'm missing like a, a hotness uh, deal. I don't know. The new mate notes. I'm just not getting it. Steven. I'll have to come back to that one. Five, four to 500 bucks. I was luckily given a sample from Austin Duna community. Which one are you talking about there, Daniel? Oh, the uh, Tobias uh, and the Angel. Interesting. Yeah, that's an expensive bottle. That's 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 crazy. Arbit tin is 
in my opinion, much older tasting than what it, I get in the black. Much older tasting than I get in the black. Okay. Maybe I'm still missing what it is that you guys are detecting then because the oldness, the refinement factor. Hmm. See, I thought I got that out of that. Man, I don't know. The only line, in my opinion, comes from the bourbon barrels and the tin combined with the spirit too. I guess you're somehow getting the the you're somehow getting the spirit itself notes without even the flavor. And that's what I'm I'm having a problem getting into to to detect. Our tin could come us off as older than twelve at some times. Okay, I'm not gonna dispute that because it does have a refinement taste to it. I wasn't that big of a fan, but I need to go back to it. Yeah. The Tobias and the and the, yeah the Muse that that was one that was a mixed reviews kind of a whiskey. <laughs> Don't go looking for reasons to dislike more whiskeys. That's a big path to go down. Yeah, no, I want to speed that man. Uh, that's a uh, no, no. I, I do. I just want to get better with my ability to describe and present taste to you guys. And if I'm missing something, and it feels like I'm missing something with detecting new make versus um, a refinement, then I got to get with a program. I'm missing something. So I'll do some more homework. I am going to look into the black and see what they're using for that. Because because I swear, man, if, they, if they're using anything younger, I'm, I'm sorry, if they're not using anything older than 12 in there, I will be like, wow, did I miss it? I really missed it because I thought it was Mickey Head Swan Song. I thought that was his 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 outro to to you know riding off into the deep sunset. I thought he did a good job with the black. I I was surprised that um, I don't know. We'll see. I'll, I'll do some homework and see if I can find out. I'm going to have to wrap this up, guys, because I have to work tomorrow. It's already 1230. I tasted uh, after warming up some peated, but, you know, the method, bro. I said more taste. Yeah, it tastes more like elevated log of one sixteen. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, Dustin, maybe do a reproach and see what you think about the, uh, the Tobias deal, because I have heard mixed – but it might be one of those that needs oxidation. It just it just might, you know, it might need um, some oxidation to really come alive. And some of these drams are like that. Some of these drams are, you know, great at the beginning and not so great at the end. And some are horrible at the beginning and not so great at the end, you know. I'm sorry, not horrible at the beginning and, and great at the end. You know what I'm trying to say. But it does happen with a lot of different whiskeys. But, um I got to look into this black and see. Well, thanks so much, guys, for stopping by. I do have to uh, do some work tomorrow, so I better cut it after all this. But thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate the passion as well, trying to get, you know, into being better tasters. That's what our mission really is, is trying to figure out, you know, how do we dig even deeper and get more out of these trams? Because, like, you know, like the Dustin said, you uh, you it's expensive, and and you don't want to f- you know fuck around or, and screw up and, and all that stuff, man. I really appreciate it, one, and, and the same with Steven, man. That's what it's about. It's it's about the juice, and um, I'm looking forward to, to giving you notes about the Benrock 21 when I get more into it, the Altavania distillery bottle even though it's a cheap one might be worth your time to take a look at if you if you know if you're at all interested in trying something new and and you're not too uh, hung up on the old juice justin and steven (laughs) but uh yeah and i'm the same way daniel i'd love to see dustin's uh uh, re- re-review of the Tobias and the Muse because uh, that's one of those bottles that you don't really hear a lot about. Yeah, it's always fun to nerd out with everybody else as well because that's what it's all about is the whiskey, the juice itself. Why talk about politics and religion when you can talk about whiskey is what I say. <laughs> it's the only thing that we might not agree when what's 
good about a whiskey or what's you know the best notes and all that kind of stuff and if 21 is better than the 18 uh, pick your distillery we might not agree on that stuff but at least we agree that this this nectar is just the best you know experience that we, we've got to to work with outside of work you know you work and you want to enjoy your yourself why not have a really damn good dram of something well savant java guys and hope to see you soon uh definitely next tuesday at uh, nine if not before then might throw a little mini review on the side and see what we can do but um yeah, Dustin is uh, also a reviewer over at distiller.com. Check out distiller.com if you get a chance. We, we do a lot of writing reviews when we get a chance, and uh, we'll have to uh, take a look and see if he does a re-revisit of the uh, Tobias and the Muse. And feel free, Dustin, to come back here and talk about it when you get a chance if you uh, want to next Tuesday, maybe uh, if you're up for it. See you later for now.